Uh, there we go. All right. I think we have just barely attained a quorum. Um, Yutha, I'm not counting Ilana Mercado in the executive um, head count, partly because she's on LOA and partly because I don't think she's actually on exec um, because she chairs a task force as opposed to a standing committee. Okay, because I have the task force chairs listed also, but I'll remember. Yeah. Okay. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count them for quorum purposes. Um okay. but good evening, folks. All right, we definitely have hey, Barry. Happy belated birthday to Pat Wattler Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Happy birthday. Happy happy birthday. Birthday. I sent you. I sent happy you a birthday, birthday message, Pat. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. Ah, and happy advanced Mother's Day to everybody who ever had a mother, who is a mother, who loves a mother, who wants to be a mother. Happy <laughs> mother, advanced Mother's Day to everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Pat. You Excellent. covered all your bases. And happy birthday in advance to Barry Weinberg also. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes. Exactly. It's next Barry. week. I know. Oh, I didn't know you um, were a tourist, Barry. Yep. Barry, I think last year, Barry, was it, was it the general board meeting on your birthday last year? Yes. That's the general, right. That's the right. general board meeting is frequently on my birthday. That was your um, birthday uh, gift. That's your birthday uh, gift. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, I am going to call us to order here at 6.38 okay. p.m. Okay. Um, the, uh, there was a revised agenda that was sent out. So if you'll give me a moment to pop that open, I'll share it on the screen. Um, I want to also note that we're probably going to have to um, set some time aside for the um, letter of support, which I'm not actually seeing on the agenda, um, which was voted out of the um, Housing uh, and Land Use Committee meeting. Oops. What happened? Um, on Thursday. I mean, Tuesday, today's Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, it, should be, it should be there. You're talking about the till? No, there's another. It's a letter of support. Oh, I didn't I didn't see that. Uh, 1763 Amsterdam Avenue. Um, that will probably be worthy of an in-depth discussion. So heads up. Um, are there any other items that need to be added to the agenda? We have the reports, there's no presentation tonight. And then we have four action items before the liquor licenses and then uh, a lot, um, 10, no, 12 liquor licenses. Wow. Are we gonna call the roll? Um, sure, we can call the roll. You want me to do that? Yep. Okay, Joyce. Walter. Aki. <laughs> Miriam. Deidre. Colton. Moretta. Present. Victor. Present. John Martin Green uh, is not a neither. Neither is Miriam, really. Okay. They're both task force chairs. Okay. Daria. Present. Monique. Present. Laquita. Present. Heather. Present. Pat. Present. Ted. Present. Signe. Huh. 
She is here. Solomon. Present. Jonathan. And then Jonathan is LOA, isn't he? Jonathan is I'm here. Jonathan Senegal is here. Okay. Uh, so, Jonathan Thomas is LOA, right? Jonathan Thomas. No, he isn't. I, oh. uh, I don't even know you. Is his seat vacant technically or? Well, he didn't reapply, so. Oh, okay. Oh, then he's not on the board. Then he's not on the board. Right. right. <laughs> no, no. Oh. He's still a member until we have the new members. Oh. That's that's correct. Hypothetically, we're supposed to get them April thirtieth, but you know that's observed more in the breach. Um, so I think the seat is still occupied by Jonathan until we get the names. Hmm. Okay. Carolyn. Yeah. Edwin. Edwin hey, was here. Edwin said in the in the chat that he's here. Oh, uh, Edwin! Oh, he is here. Yeah, it's in yeah. the chat. No, but he left. Yeah, he had a come uh, another uh, some kind of court meeting. Oh well, probably his building is in court. Yeah, with the they landlord. have a court session, so he okay. I think he was trying to be excused. Got mm. it. Well, he's excused them, but he did pop in to put something in the chat, so he might come back on at a later time, Ted. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just write that in. Okay, Liz. <coughs> Barry. Uh, present. And that seems to be everything. Solomon, uh, are you wanting to take the uh minutes or not yeah i can take them no great problem. all right and ted deirdre mcintosh brown has joined okay two four six eight <laughs> ten twelve fourteen fifteen so that is a healthy quorum mm -hmm. uh, all right. Now that we have taken the roll, the next order of business is the adoption of the agenda. So the agenda has already been amended to include a letter of support regarding 1763 Amsterdam Avenue. Uh, are there any other amendments to the agenda that are necessary? Well, 1763, uh, we have it on this. Oh, well, then I Here. must have... Barry, there, what about the reso we did with MHCC on affordable housing? Hold on. Let me just, because um, Yutha sent out an updated. Barry, you um, just added the 1763. Uh, it wasn't on the revised. Oh, okay. I got, I, I, yeah. All right. Let's and bring that. Deidre Brown McIntosh. Deidre McIntosh Brown uh, is present. She left it in the chat. Yes. Um, Rezo regarding what was it again? Affordable housing. Yeah, it's affordable housing and institutions in CB nine. I I wrote it on the Rezo. I, <laughs> I don't have uh, access to that Rezo at the moment. Um, I'll try and get it. All right, I'll I'll also try and pull it up. I'm on um, the train. Yep. Um, so there are now five action items. Uh, well, I mean, there's there's more counting the liquor license, but there are five prior to the liquor licenses. Um, are there any other um, resolutions or action items that need to be added to the agenda? Okay, a motion to adopt the agenda as amended would be in order. So moved. Moved by Laquita, seconded by Ted. All those in favor of adopting the agenda as amended say aye. 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 All, all opposed say nay. All right, the agenda is adopted.
The next item of business is the adoption of the minutes from our April 13th executive committee meeting. So moved. Moved by Carolyn Thompson, seconded by Deirdre McIntosh Brown. All those in favor of adopting the minutes say aye. Aye. All aye. opposed say nay. <clears throat> All right, the minutes have been adopted. So, which brings us to reports. I will start with my chair's report. Um, the board is operating at full staffing strength which is not new news, but it is still news and it is something for which I'm very grateful. We have an excellent staff. Oh um, man, it is good news. <laughs> it is good news, yes. It's it's old news, but good news. Um, and something that I am very happy about uh, because I think it's made it easier for everyone. Um, we have maybe, 20 to 50 days before the city's budget is hopefully adopted. Um, now is the time to make a full court press. If there are any budget items that we had priorities on that we don't see in the budget, uh, one of the action items tonight addresses that, which is the TIL program, Rezo. Um, and we are also at a very interesting point in um, developments for our neighborhood um, in that we as a board have historically been open to zoning applications in exchange for uh, more and deeper affordable housing. However, I want to draw everyone's attention to something that will be mentioned later tonight, but affects a number of issues that the board is involved in, which is uh, short staffing levels at agencies, including HPD and Department of City Planning um, and presumably LPC, although I'm not actually sure about that. Heather might know more. Um, but the lack of staff at these agencies has meant that applications that must go through them have been significantly delayed. The board, as a sponsor of the Morningside Heights rezoning, is affected by that because the rezoning is still in limbo, what Hollywood might call development hell. Um, the It also impacts um, potential projects that were involved in, like the RKO Hamilton Theater on Broadway and 146th Street, which, if we get our, you know, Druthers would require what's known as a 74711, which is a special type of rezoning for landmarks. And um, it also impacts our ability to negotiate with developers to get more affordable housing in, in twofold ways. One, because uh, any rezonings that might be on the table take instead of maybe 12 to 16 months are now taking two years to two and a half years, which is kind of mind boggling. Oh my God. Yeah, and the delay is not on the ULERT process of which we are a part. Those, those um, charter mandated timelines are unchanged. The delay is on the Department of City Planning certifying the application, which thus kicks off the ULERP. So DCP has to review these applications, make sure that all of the studies and things are satisfactory and meet the requirements, and they are very behind on that. That is, again, affecting our rezoning uh, of Morningside. Second, um, we often encourage or urge um, developers to build affordable housing almost all of which requires subsidized financing that is um, administered by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, HPD. Wait lists, or rather wait times for decisions on applications for that funding are also stretching to two years at this point. Wow. And, you know, this is a similar story to what we voted on last month with the um, home first grant, except that affected individuals seeking down payment assistance. So all of that to say, you know, normally we want 
more time to deal with development issues. Time usually works in our favor. However, time, this, this kind of time is in fact not working so much in our favor these days. So please bear in mind if, you know, if we have something contingent upon agency response, depending on the agency, the staffing levels may impact the timeline. Um, that being said, I also wanted to just a couple more announcements promote that DEP has extended their uh, deadline for applying for amnesty for backwater bills um, until I believe the end of the month. Um, and that that is a something that was started last month by Mayor Adams. Um, and it in exchange for uh, down payments and entering into payment agreements, the DEP will um, uh, will forgive interest and fines on the uh, backwater. You know, there's a there is some details there. It's also really important to note that um, amnesty. Uh, there's a special enhanced amnesty for HPD, uh, uh, not for for affordable housing, including HDFCs and Mitchell Lama buildings. Um, so the, that deadline has been extended through May 31st. If you know of any HDFCs that are behind on their water bills or any other buildings, I would encourage you to work to I encourage you to spread the word about that and let them know. Um, We are also coming to the end of the term of President Bollinger at Columbia University, which will end June 30th. Um, as a reminder, um, there will be a new president that has already um, been announced, um, and that is uh, Dr. Shafiq, I believe. Um, that sounds and, right. And, you know, she will take over July 1st, so that will be a new chapter in our relationship with the university. Um, and then finally, I also wanted to flag that the session for Albany is slated to come to a close at the end of June. So the budget passed by the state did not have much in the way of housing did not have what we were looking for in terms of J51 tax abatements and credits or the replacement for that, um, did not weaken the climate re requirements that have been in place, but did roll back some of the bail reform of 2019. Um, and so I would just say that uh, that if we have any legislative priorities, we have about a month and a half to push for them. Uh, in good news, though, Braun, Assemblymember Braunstein of Queens, who had the bill about the tax abatements to replace J51, has introduced a new bill about tax abatements um, that is much better than the one we responded to. Uh, and it is more closely targeted at enhancements to reduce carbon emissions. So um, we may want to um, pass a reso later in June if that has still not been passed in Albany. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up my chair's report there. I've already gone on too long. Um, but are there any questions? Great. We'll move on to the treasurer's report. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. There are no changes in the treasurer's report. That's it. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, uh, we, can, I I, add, can I add something? Yes. Uh, DCP recently alerted the office that the budget process will be starting in June as opposed to September. Oh. Uh, boards met during the winter and requested that we get more time for budget submissions. So they have granted us the extra time so it will start in June, but it, the completion will still be the same. And that's um, October. October 31st. 
So we just have a bit more extra time to submit our budget request or to start working on them. So I would uh, suggest that committees, before they go on summer hiatus, start discussing at their June meetings uh, budget requests for FY25. Although we may not know what happened to our FY24 requests by the yeah, time we start yeah. discussing. I guess, thanks, DCP. Um, the other thing I will add to the treasurer's report is that um, we did the 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 off the officers did um, decide that it would be prudent to set aside some money for staff development. Um, so there are trainings available through DCAS and you know potentially other programs. Um, it's not a it's not really a substantive change to the budget. Um, it's not really necessarily from our OTPS this year, but um, it's worth noting. Uh, Derry, you have your hand up? Yes. Um, I have, uh, can, can you tell me please when the discretionary funding requests need to be in? And um, it's not actually from my committee, it's from me on behalf of the full board that we um, use some of the money to get business cards. So I wasn't sure where to ask or um, insert. So I guess I'll ask here. Sorry. That's a, that's a good question. Um, in the past, we haven't done business cards. I think we can and we should. Um, it's something that, you know, the treasurer and the officers can discuss and, and youth can get a quote on. Um, I think that would be helpful, um, and we might limit it to the executive committee. Um, it would really help in going about our business, you know. In the past, in the past, we had business cards for the committee chairs, but because they change from time to time, we leave the name portion open, so you have to write in your name, and it would have the committee information. That makes sense. Hmm. That doesn't. That's mm. that doesn't look that professional. When that doesn't look it does it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we, maybe we shouldn't get like thousands, but you know, maybe yeah. if we get a hundred or something they like. They come in boxes. Of they five. come in a box of five hundred. That's why we use them where you write it in. The chair and the district manager; those are approved by um, the city. Now we get them. Uh, it would have to come out of our supplies budget. I will check with OMB if it will be an expenditure that would be approved. As I said in the past, we did, but we left the name blank and they signed in the name and it had the, na the committee name and the address of the office. Is that something that we could vote on? Because generally if we're chairs, we're gonna be here at least two years in a, you know, I, I know they change, but two years is a is a good amount of time. It can give away, a, is that something that we, that could be discussed, yeah. voted I, on? I, I've been out of my business cards for like a year and a half. Hmm. Um, and part of the reason I never reordered them is because I never knew when we were gonna move into the new office. Yes. But, um, <laughs> but the, uh, youth will follow up with the Office of Management and Budget to determine what, if any applicable rules there still are around business cards, Daria. So, you know, if, if we need a resolution, we'll put it on the June agenda. If we don't need a resolution, we'll circle back with the exec. If OMB approves it, we don't need a reso. What I right. would say, Daria, in the meantime, if you could find out what's the minimum that we could purchase. Okay. We've had boxes of 500. Okay. I've I be um I first became aware of them uh with community board 10 and I literally had a long conversation about them with their from uh their uh their district manager so maybe he'll give me the information of where they got theirs maybe I can I'll kinda... speak to Shatik also he has cards for the yeah, they have cards okay. jackets they got all kind of merch but I <laughs> I would just love the car the cards <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. do. They have cards, and they have had them I, for years. 
I, I think the jackets you have to purchase as a no, member of CB. They purchased. I listen. I asked all the questions. <laughs> all right. Well, we don't. We don't, we, we don't need to get written up in the city yeah, again. No, um, CB ten kind of does what they want to do. Not to say that it's it's within the guidelines of mm -hmm. OMB. So I don't. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> yeah, Carolyn, you've you've been waving. Um, no, what I was going to say is that I remember Clapping. you asked when be, as I became out of first by year and I wanted cards. I was told I had to purchase them myself. So I got my card from this to print. Okay. But that's, I knew that was the past. So I don't know about now. Yeah, that's what we were told in the past. That the yeah, because I, I had my own cards too. And I didn't, I didn't buy new well, ones because of the fact that we had changed the address. So the I waited. Cards were only for the chair and the district manager. Again, I will check with OMB. Maybe it's changed. Now I'm being told that CB10 has cards, jackets. Maybe it's something that I, w I wasn't being made aware of. I'll look into it. I'm going to draw the line at cars, though. Yeah. Um, cars. Then, if anyone I remembers that story. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you get a your car. Hand up. You uh, get a car. Uh, Jonathan. I, don't, I don't think you have to order 500 because from time to time, if I'm in a pinch, I have a box of 50. You know, you can get, you can go down and get a small quantity to these copy places. Mm. You know, there's also a, a a template, a program that we could purchase also and yeah. just buy the card and have it copied. We could also do that. And Kim has our seal, so we could affix our seal to the the copy and print them. I'll look into that as well. And they look good. I've seen them. I got a box of cards that I don't use anymore. Come in five hundred. Now I got to throw out all the cards. Yeah. No. 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 So we're gonna we're gonna take the conversation about cards offline. It's a good point, Daria. Um, is there any other question about the treasurer's report? Oh, when is the um, uh, deadline for uh, submitting proposals for? I. I now, Health and environment it, has a, a couple of uh, proposals, but we don't have the cost. We've been trying to confirm a location. And we, we have yes, I've been working on that, Laquita. I have been speaking with Phoebe and Lofton at Columbia. They, um, Marita, I don't know if she's spoken to you, but she did confirm your request. She's still Thank working. You. Yes, she was supposed to call you. She's uh, Laquita, told me. All right, Yuta, yes, thank you. She called me, but she I did not understand what it was all about. So thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. Laquita, back yes, to the environment. They're working on it. It's not a definite yay. It's a, not a definite nay. So they're still and working. And we can look at Manhattanville School, but what is the deadline? Uh, the, de so the deadline now. is ASAP, Laquita, because we have to, the money must be spent by June 30th. So we could really? just put in the proposal without uh, the cost of location, I guess. Yes, exactly. And then- you know, Okay, the cost... so we'll try to get it in Monday, if not tomorrow. Great. Well, for events, we try to get events that venues don't, don't cost us anything. That's why we try to look for organizations that will donate their space to us. Mm -hmm. Right, but, but even still, just submit it Monday at the latest so that okay. we can get stuff purchased. Okay. Um, uh, any other questions for the treasurer's report? Okay, moving right along, Yutha, the district manager's report. Good evening, everyone. In addition to my report, I'd like to share that the uh, Department of Sanitation is set to launch a pilot of containerized waste collection in Harlem this fall with an eye towards possibly ridding the New York streets of mountains of trash set out each week. I have received reports that sanitation has identified District 9 to be part of this pilot program set to address the rat infestation plague in the city. This program won't be implemented until the fall. However, sanitation is currently retrofitting containers at various locations throughout the district. 
Uh, the pilot will repurpose a few parking spots in 10 residential blocks with shared wheeled waste containers about three square yards each for trash, recycling, and organics produced by the block. The waste will be collected by sanitation trucks retrofitted with mechanicized tippers to fit and dump the loads rather than workers lifting and tossing the bags themselves. The collections will increase from three to six times per week. Containers will also be placed outside of up to 14 schools in the neighborhood. Uh, Community Board 9 was chosen in part due to complaints about rat rodent infestation throughout the district. And we are also part of the rat mitigation zone, which is concentrating on schools and high trash areas. We are aware of the concerns that the community has been uh, sharing with the board office surrounding these containers. Uh, Barry and Victor have agreed to invite sanitation to our June general board meeting. I'm currently in talks with council member Abreu and further details surrounding this meeting will be forthcoming. Also, uh, DEP issued a notice of violation to billiards and bars, as you know, in uh, February of this year. New York City Open ECB uh, hearing was scheduled for April the 25th. Billiards and Bar Solo Nostris LLC did not show at the hearing and therefore defaulted. As a result, NYC Oath updated the violation to a penalty of $8,000. After DEP updated the residents, they re the residents requested another DEP noise inspection. To note, DEP doesn't normally inspect issues uh, uh, and which issue another um, complaint notice of a violation while they await the pending violation to be heard at Oath and ECB. So once they defaulted, residents asked for a new inspection, which was scheduled with one of the residents who resided at 571 West 139th Street. DEP conducted a noise reading in the complainant's apartment on Friday, May 6th at 12 a.m. and DEP issued a notice of violation. I have the number. Um, Oath ECB hearing date is scheduled for August the 22nd at 9 a.m. DEP noise readings was taken inside the complainant's apartment with a total reading of 55 decimals and and, and buy-in of 45 decimals, with the source being DJ equipment speakers at the establishment. Since the establishment defaulted and they received three DEP noise violations for the same code, all upheld by the old DEP legal department, is currently working with SLA and Oath. DEP will meet with Oath next month for a cease and desist seal order from Oath at their next board meeting. Oath will make a determination and then notify the establishment of their determination and advise them to come into compliance or enforcement action. Seal will be taken. Uh, currently, the the board office is currently working on our June newsletter. We are looking to include board highlights, which included the Happy Monkey event, Senior Resources event, the BRC tours, as well as Bollinger's departure. I've been in talks with uh, Phoebe and Lofton, and they're going to give they're going to share some information with the office to be added to our newsletter and. Denny Farrell Riverbank State Park is celebrating its 30th anniversary on June 17th, rain or shine, at 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Festivities include carousel rides, roller skating, swimming, puppet shows, and concerts. Uh, it will be held at the entrance of the park at 145th Street and Riverside Drive. And that concludes my report. And I just left myself a little note that I will uh, place a call with CB10 regarding their business cards. And I will be speaking with OMB. That Thank concludes my report. Thank you, Yusa. 
have we heard anything about SLA to confirm that the establishment does not have a license for hard liquor? No, they did not address that. Uh, SLA has not. Um, we know that they are selling and providing hard liquor, but their license is for beer and wine, I believe. Beer, wine, cider. Okay, okay. I don't know. SLA and um, the commanding officer, the 3 O reached out to them or they had a meeting. Well, uh, Mendez has, has, it, has Mendez gotten back to you, Carolyn? I know they had a meeting, but she hasn't gotten back to me yet. Okay. They have a new commanding officer, so I will definitely be reaching out to the new commander to find out. I think this meeting was with Corabel. Am I correct, Carolyn? Yes. Yes, it was. Okay. She just started. In fact, she joined us at the senior resource event, along with Mendez and Espinosa. They they all attended the event. Um, yes. Walter will be elaborating on it. All I could say is it was a great event. And although the weather wasn't cooperating with us, we made it work. So he will give uh, details surrounding it. But I can say it was a great event. And all those that attended enjoyed. And um, the borough president's office, I'd like to thank them for the certificates that they supplied for the um, organizations in the community that have been working tires, tirelessly with the Senior Issues Committee. We awarded them with appreciation certificates. So it was a great time. Yes, Shanika, a great time had by all. Um. Yes, so Shanika has has joined Ted FYI, unless you got her already, and I'm just not remembering. And I didn't know her mom was there. I wish I would have known. It was so many seniors there. It was a great event. Yes, it's Captain Jessica Ram uh, Rivera. Yutha is the uh, yes. commanding officer, I believe. Yes, Yutha. One update on your report regarding um, billets. Mm -hmm. That the uh, assistant deceased comes through. What it means is that they will take the equipment, the music equipment, lock them up. It means they won't have any music. Okay. Well, that's what uh, that's what I was told. So yeah. that's what they're really looking forward to. Exactly. And they don't appear. And this is like the third hearing that they did not appear. Right. Oh. Why it's going to open? Yeah. Um, we should also flag whoever the owner is on their original liquor license so that we know about them in the future if they apply for any other licenses. I haven't applied yet. No, I know, but it, Just you know, flag it, them. yes, <laughs> I understand that. But yeah. they will they will apply under a different name. We know that. Know that. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions for Yutha's district manager report? Quick question. Um, you thought do you have any more room in the newsletter? I had something small I wanted to add, if possible. The new Girl Scout troop at Grant Houses. I happened to be walking past the other day, Saturday, and they were selling Girl Scout cookies in front of Grant. I uh, took some pictures, thought it might be something notable to add. Sure, sure. That's good news. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, oh, wow. Quite right. enthusiastic. Uh, selling with signs and stuff on the corner 125th in Amsterdam. So, wow. yeah. signs. I hope they make that go. Say again? I oh, they go? I yeah, hope so. I yeah. I couldn't help out totally, but I did buy a few boxes. You did your share. <laughs> I, I, I like watched that. my weight, so. I, got <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, and I do want to celebrate and give enormous kudos to Carlton and Walter for all of their hard work and the staff and everyone who participated in making that such a wonderful event. I am very upset I was out of the country and had to miss it. Um, I have uh, another ad, if possible, Barry. Well, you're up next on the agenda for the Elections Committee report. Is this to do with that or... Um, I would, I think for the newsletter would be, it uh, would be interesting to add uh, Basha's uh, book for children, 17 Trees, yes. as well, uh, and the do donations that will go to the district uh, schools and, and libraries for ages, uh, uh, I think it's three to seven, eight. but uh, her book, which is out. 
and will be donated to uh, CB9. Yes, that's an excellent point, Laquita. Um, but now are there any terms, other, oh. I was going to ask, are there any other notes on the district manager's report? I, I will say that I'm very excited about the containerization proposal. Um, you know, I've been watching it since it was an RFP. Um, and we are one of the few places where people still set out bags on the sidewalk that are then picked up by, you know, sanitation workers and tossed manually into a truck. So we're kind of getting with the 20th century here. Um, <laughs> They're huge, though. Those are huge containers. We make a lot of trash in this city. Joyce. Hmm. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to say, Barry, that I actually saw them measuring different places um, in the community. And I went over and spoke to them, and they were telling me what they were doing. So they are actually doing this. It's really yes. happening. It's very exciting. We should also reach out to them and have them put them anywhere that's one of those zip car parking spots. I asked for that. <laughs> I agree. Um, I asked yeah. for that. I did. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so moving right along. Uh, Laquita, we turn to you now for the Elections Committee report. Okay, very briefly, um, we had uh, a meeting as recent as uh, this past Monday uh, just to go over the uh, the list and see if there were any intent to run forms. Uh, there's only one. So um, it alarmed me a bit because I know I had talked to a, a number of people and so have the other members of the committee uh, in terms of the survey. So um, the survey did suggest uh, that a lot of people were reluctant to run as reported at our last meeting. So I um, and a couple of others, uh, actually one other got on the phone and uh, we had heard some names, uh, you know, that were thought about. And so we have a, a potential, a possible slate in terms of people who have expressed interest if they were nominated, um, particularly from the floor. Hopefully by tomorrow, um, I'll know, um, we were calling everybody, you know, not leaving anyone out uh, just to, you know, have some expression of how they would feel if they were nominated. We still have a few people uh, to reach out to. So primarily um, Tiffany co-chair and I are, are making those calls. And, uh, but it looks like realistically that um, we will probably have nominations from the floor. We have every position, someone for each of the positions in terms of nominations who had, uh, and uh, we've talked to them. Some have not uh, made definite decisions. Uh, so we're hoping by Monday to have that. Uh, on Thursday, we plan to do uh, a dry run, just a test run of uh, a hybrid situation with the voting as we did in 2021. So that's it. Thank you, Laquita. And for anyone interested in running, when are those intent to run forms due? Uh, no later than Monday uh, with seven names that, um, you know, you talk, each candidate talks to seven people, type in their name on the intent to run form. Those seven persons have to be present on this coming Thursday at the uh, general board meeting. Um, if they are not present, you know, we could just uh, ask for nominations. Those seven names represent nominations. And we could get what whoever may just by coincidence not be able to make it, we can get possibly someone from uh, attendance who's there um, in person or um, by Zoom. So, but it's, uh, the actual intent to run forms are due no later than Monday, Monday, five o'clock. And they could be emailed to me um or to 
the office. Uh, we've mentioned emailing to youth. Uh, so I'm hoping as soon as if they do get forms that we will, you know, I'm sure the office will email them to me. And so otherwise, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, a few people more to call, you know, just to kind of see where they are and how they would feel if they were nominated, particularly if someone has sort of mentioned their name in nomination from, you know, to one of us. Okay, anything else? Um, I we think have, we that... have a possible slate where all the positions uh, that we, we talk to people and technically all the positions could be, you know, could be filled people who are willing to run, but it's as if they had to be drafted. You know, they said, yes, I would do it uh, if I'm nominated. Um, and they were happy that other people thought of them as such. So I don't know if there's um, uh, a shyness, a reluctance, a fear, but- uh, An exhaustion. <laughs> or exa yeah, exhaustion as well. And so, uh, you know, all of the above. But they're in, they're just not just names either. These are people. Um, those names are people who are have shown themselves to have leadership skills, to be thorough, detailed, knowledgeable, willing to go the extra mile. And uh, we see how much uh, effort committee members, committee chairs, have put into their work and. Definitely, uh, Barry, Mr. District 9, <laughs> Mr. Manhattan. Uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort. And, uh, you know, Community Board 9 gets a lot of praise around the city um, and highly regarded. And so, again, even though there are people we've had to reach out to, there are people who seem to be, in, um, you know, willing and worthy. Excellent. Well, I know we have no shortage of talented and uh, and and individuals with integrity on this board. Um, absolutely, absolutely. They just need a little tug and, and a reminder that you know they are highly valued. Um, Walter, you have a hand up. What I just want to uh, I think you, Lakita, I think you said that all positions are open. Technically, all the positions are open and uh, there could be more than one person. In some cases, we, you know, talk to people and we have two people per position, you know, in reaching out. So um, all the positions are open and, um, you know, uh, if you're interested, just get that intent to run form in. A long, uh, 250 word essay, not a resume, um, plus seven names. And if you look over your uh, mailings that have come from um, youth uh, for our general board meetings and executive, executive committee meetings since March, the intent to run form has appeared each time. And I apologize, it's not in, um, it's not in the, uh, executive committee uh, folder this uh, tonight. I apologize for that. But just look over all the other weeks where we've had uh, executive or general board meetings and you'll see the intent to run form. So just uh, put in your name if you're interested in a position, get seven other persons to uh, agree to be part of your nominating group and have it emailed um, you know, take a picture of it and send it as a text to me. Uh, and I'm listed, my email address is correct. And I have uh, put my telephone number in, in most cases, I can drop it in the chat. So if you want to text it, it can be texted as well. Thank you. Laquita Pat Watler Johnson has her hand up. Okay. Hi, Pat. Hi, Laquita. How are you? It's so good to hear your voice. Thanks. I have a question. Um, what is the what night is the night where the nominations are going to be done? Is that going to be next week at the general board meeting? 
next Thursday, general board okay. is nominations. Okay, Saturday. just wanted to know. Yep. Thank you. And, uh, you need to be present and your seven persons need to be, um, you know, present or else we, you know, have oftentimes gotten found a sixth, seventh person to, you know, uh, sign your form or uh, vouch for you and be part of your nominating group. Um, and sometimes, and, and also nominations can come from the floor, as I mentioned before, nominations can come directly from the floor. And if they do, uh, you get your seven um, persons to nominate you that same night. And your form though, intent to run form has to be in no later than May 25. Thank the you. Thursday. Thank you. Ted, did I miss anything? Ted was at our meeting. We were so happy to talk with him. And he stayed on, we were, you know, a couple of hours because uh, Tiffany had to join us late because of a conflict. So while when the others left, you know, we remained. Did I yes. miss anything, Ted? The only thing that I think we need to mention is candidates night. Oh, yes, that is May 31st. Uh, Wednesday, May 31st at uh, 630. And candidates must be, everyone nominated, must be present. Okay, every nominee. Okay. Thanks, Ted. Any, was there another question or did I miss something? Um, I don't see another hand. Thank you. Um, so we will proceed to the committee reports. Um, and I will ask you again to keep it brief. Three minutes is a good length of a committee report. Um, and just give us the highlights. And if you have specific events coming up, um, you know, you can, you can point us to them in your minutes if they're recorded there. Um, we'll start with, uh, Carolyn and uh, Pat for Uniform Services Transportation. Okay. We had a live meeting last week. <clears throat> not too much going on with DOT. We had a lot of liquor licenses that were not approved at the April meeting, which were approved last week. And then I had the liquor license for 26 reasons. Detective Harper approved them as well. With the acceptance of the Grange, Harper is not going to approve them at all. The old, the, excuse me? The, the old Grange? The old Grange. He's not approving that at all. Plus, I got to see in the application. And I explained all that to him because they're closed, which he didn't know. So he said I would look out for it, but he's not going to approve it either way. Otherwise, the next. Folks in DOT regarding the containers. I think we asked them to look into the zip cards if they would give up some spaces for the containers, he'll get back to Beyond that, that's about it. Carolyn, which is it the new Grange or the old Grange that uh, the C of O was requested for and they never supplied? The old, the old Grange, which is closed. Okay. The new Grange is approved. Oh, all right, Carolyn, I have a question, if you all don't mind. Um, as you know, I couldn't make the meeting. I'm so sorry. I was out of town and I couldn't be there. But I do have a question. I noticed that on the list of those that are being approved, some of them, the licenses have already been approved um, by the State Liquor Authority. Um, Tartina, Picante, and um, uh, Presto Fresh Mexican Grill. Um, yeah. So are we just doing it for committee support or how does that work? No, it was on the um, agenda for April, for the April meeting, which remember they were not approved. Right, so, right. Uh, Captain Rivera. So she looked into it and ah. said, given her approval. Okay. Okay. Hey, once you check with SLA, she said everything is fine. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Um, question, Carolyn and Pat. So the Grange, I just want to get clear because Edwin's not here and I know he's been um, talking about the new Grange 
uh, quite a bit, saying they still have violations from the old Grange electrical problems that have not been um, cured. So, we are we talking about the old Grange or the new Grange here? New Grange, which I spoke to their attorney. Yes. Stated that all violations have been corrected. We need that in writing. I asked for the Senate team, but I have not. So we can't approve that until we see something in writing. Well, yeah. that's my take on it because sure. they have violations there that were pretty serious, and the people who live in the building above are very concerned about the electrical in particular. So I would say not to approve that until such time they show us something. I don't take lawyer's word for anything. Well, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that it's been approved by Detective Harper. All I need from her is to send me the corrections which claims were made. If she gets them to me, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you know right away. So what I would suggest is let Harper know that there might be violations there that have not been approved and rectified by the city. He's just approving that there's no complaints, but the complaints are not police department complaints. There are violations with the city. Yeah, the Grange is that what the Grange or New Grange? What location is that? Um, um 16, 16, 16, um, 17. Amsterdam yeah, 16. Avenue? All right. The New Grange is um 1627-35 Amsterdam, and the old Grange is 1635. So it's it's okay. next door. And they're both within the confines of the 26 precinct? Yes. Yes, sector C, sector C as in Carol. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will reach out to Harper and let him know. Meantime, I'll wait for um, Ms. Coney to send me that information. Okay. About the violation. Excellent. Um, so we will follow up on that because I know that that is a pressing issue. Um, hearing no further questions, though, we'll move on to arts and culture. Um, Jonathan and uh, Daria. Um, I'll jump in. Uh, Daria was uh, came in late, I believe. She um, and an excuse absence. Uh, we had, I think, uh, we had just a couple of presentations, but I think um, one of the interesting uh, items on, that was on the agenda was um, uh, that uh, Michael Palmer put forth uh, a draft letter of support uh, for um, to engage uh, uh, with with the WHDC help uh, to engage Columbia to provide five thousand square foot space for an arts organization as it is uh, cited in the CBA. Um, Michael and Ziad met with Phoebe and Lofton about uh, this and other issues. Uh, since then, uh, they asked for the committee's support and, and, and to, to vote on this draft, which we did not. And uh, since then, uh, they retracted the request mm -hmm. for letter of support. So, um, I think I'm bringing this up now because it was on the agenda. We did discuss it at the meeting briefly, uh, but now uh, there's something maybe Victor might know. I'm not in touch with Phoebe and Lofton, but um, Ziad and Michael are negotiating independently on, I think, a space with Columbia. So that that was really the uh, an important topic. We did bring up um, uh, briefly having the committee members think about goals for next year. 
and the use of discretionary funds. That's about it. Uh, Daria, anything to add? No, can you hear me? No, um, no, he's been very thorough. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we'll turn to Walter next with the Senior Issues Committee report. I know it'll be a, a an exciting one. <laughs> okay, uh, I just I just did. Um... I compiled a list of the folks who were there. Before I uh, read the list off, I want to thank Victor, uh, Pat Wallington John, uh, came, um, uh, Carolyn was there, Miriam was there, but I missed her, and other folks sent support via you know email and stuff. But who showed up? I it started to rain. Our initial plans were to have tables outside. That fell apart in the, in the first like hour, but we were able to squeeze everybody into two offices and we had a couple of things outside with the uh, Columbia van and Verizon. But uh, we had uh, MTA was there, Werner Arthur as usual, Sir Suzanne Murphy, uh, Irene Zola, um, William Hamer, thank him as well, Richard um, Allman, uh, Morgan Cuffey, Palante, Con Edison, Will Haggis from the library, DOT, FDNY, the 26th and 36th, 30th precincts, Naomi Goldberg, um, Jocelyn Mayana from the DA office in Manhattan, Manhattan Borough President's office, um, um, Miss um, Minor, I was calling Myrna, Minor, Ryan Health Center, uh, some screening for medical stuff, Verizon, again, all of us from Columbia, Monsana Injury Prevention, Primerica, North Manhattan Improvement Corp., uh, the Dental Van, as I previously said, Arts and Minds, and New York Connects Manhattan. We had various folks who donated food. The seniors, as, uh, we had juices, uh, natural juices. Uh, we had plenty of iced tea, plenty of water. There were sandwiches. Nobody seemed to complain about the food. There's enough food to go around. The seniors, look, they seem to be very happy. Um, thank you, Yutha, and, and the support staff as well, because they did a bang-up job in getting information out. Uh, this really went better than I thought it was going to be, and it was it's really a kickoff to maybe an annual thing that we can do on a yearly basis. And I just like to reach out to like more seniors. We're looking to possibly, not possibly, having our first in-person meeting in September. So I'm going to announce that at the at the uh, June meeting. So I want to let the seniors know we want to start back in person at the community board office. That's my report. If we could also give a special thanks to our servers, Venus, yes, Venus yes. Anderson, Michelle Davis, uh, her sister Tracy, Miriam, uh, Victor, <laughs> and so many others that were there helping out. I just I want to be remiss not to mention them. Yeah, as I was the MC on in the board side of the office, I I didn't know what was going on in the, in the mm -hmm. board. It, yeah, and so I I was on one side. Everything was happening on the other side. So I just kept it rolling. And, and if you weren't it. there, you missed Walter singing also. <laughs> and Aurelis's and Aurelis's daughter. daughter. Yes. 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 Oh wow. Yes. 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 <laughs> Oh man! Should have recorded. We should have been recorded. That would have been nice. You know? Beautiful. We'll probably work on that for next year. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Um. We will go on to um health and environment next. So, Laquita, you're uh, back up. Okay. Um. Just briefly, um, we've been working on um, things we could do to make um, the agencies we interface with accountable um, and, you know, really get, uh, pay serious attention to issues that come up in our community. So uh, one of the things uh, Yutha mentioned in her report, uh, which dealt with, um, uh, the noise issue uh, above Picante and the billiards. So uh, you, uh, we met again 
with Umberto Galarza from DEP uh, right before this executive committee meeting. Um, he said the same thing to us that Yutha reported in, in her, um, her report. And so we felt better that some action was detailed and that uh, we just made them know that we were serious about the health uh, hazards of the kind of noise the tenants were complaining about and let them know that we, you know, they needed uh, a resolution to resolve as soon as possible. So of course, uh, they're to continue with, uh, with the 311 calls, et cetera, and calling the police. Uh, when the issue gets out, noise again gets out of hand. So that relates to, um, uh, I, I believe we're gonna do a letter of support in reference to uh, the noise issue to uh, just to be on record. Call but at any rate- Wireless color. Oh, Go ahead, Laquita. Uh, okay. And so uh, the other uh, issue was um, meeting with Mount Sinai. We're happy to report that um, their pub, Mount Sinai's public relations person, Brad Korn did attend our uh, May 1st meeting of the Health and Environment Committee and um, registered that uh, they were working on uh, a response and trying to um, amicably resolve the issue of uh, youth, uh, Ileana Mercado's uh, situation. And so there's uh, supposed to be a May meeting and uh, we should know that after tomorrow, but we will have a May meeting with uh, Mount Sinai and uh, we'll be letting the office know uh, in that regard as well. Um, and then the other meeting that also happened today dealt with uh, Link 5G, we did a letter of uh, a resolution to not have the towers built in our uh, historic district, actually the district around Columbia University where there are five towers that are slated, five 5G towers. And there's a lot of opposition in the city to it. Uh, the group is scheduled to meet with the mayor's office next week. I'm not sure if the mayor will be around, but uh, the Office of Technology, uh, it's OTI, um, will be present. And then the meeting with the mayor may follow up at another date. Um, but so we're planning that and uh, they're trying to see if there are people uh, from this group. They really feel that our district should speak out because a lot of what's happening with these uh, 5G towers is happening um, in communities like CB9, um, 10, 11, uh, where uh, there may not be as many much knowledge and uh, people aware of, you know, why they shouldn't go up as well as maybe why they should. So we're looking at uh, possibly a response, and we'd like for uh, Barry. Barry, your name is on. Um, that list uh, to possibly be part of the group that meet with, meets with the mayor as well as mine and uh, Edwin. So we'll follow up with that. Uh, but that's slated for Tuesday, 1230. And it will be, uh, yes, it'll be a Zoom meet. I don't think it's in person. Obviously it's not in person. And that is it for right now. We will submit proposals. Uh, on um, Monday, we briefly, dis our committee briefly discussed May 1, what we wanted those, what we thought would be a good idea. So we're gonna present, put something together. Uh, we have somewhat of an idea, but we'll fine tune it with our proposal outline to be submitted by Monday. Um, thank you, Laquita. I see that Jonathan has a uh, hand up and then Daria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Laquita, they are, um, they have a tower that's been installed on Amsterdam and 118th Street. Yeah, there's opposition. So I don't know how uh, people are very angry. And, and at this meeting this afternoon, uh, they were talking about uh, suing and, and uh, reviewing the contract and questioning the, um, you know, who gives approval for, you know, to, to sign a contract with this group, uh, a city bridge, is it? 
Um, so uh, there's a lot more that I have to read up on. And I hope to talk to this one guy that's uh, part of the committee on tomorrow, just to you know be filled in because they were meeting and today was my very first one. But yes, there's a, a lot of opposition to it across the city, not just Manhattan. So I don't know uh, what will happen. And, and the mayor may sidestep, uh, maybe sidestepping a meeting with the group by handing it over to OTI. So Thank maybe you. have another big issue. And they're not sure uh, where the needs, it's almost like 1727 Amsterdam where they were, this group also was questioning where's the data uh, related to what these um, telecom uh, companies have stated they have, and they have not come up with any uh, data. Thank that you, Laquita. And Jonathan, it's well, it's well pointed out that there is at least one of these up in our neighborhood already. Um, mm -hmm. Daria, did you still have a hand up? No, I'm sorry. It was uh, my question is for another committee. Sorry. Got it. Um, well, in that case, we will move on to another committee. Um, uh, Deirdre and uh, Shanika, if you'd like to go next for youth education and libraries. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Oh, you can not see Sorry. Hi. 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 <laughs> so we have. Good evening. Good evening. We had several committees um, that several organizations that participated. Um, highlights are that our libraries are reopening. I mean, they're That's opening up. They're geared up and ready for um, the summer. Summer fly. They have plenty of activities between um, George Bruce, Hamilton Grange, as well as the Morningside branch. We also, um, I also have had a report from Ziad that he received 200 tickets to the Liberties game that's coming up, uh, I think the 21st, and he is distributing them to community organizations, um, working with um, the Tenants uh, the tenants Association President, Valori, and um, is it Veronica? I mean, Manhattanville and Grant. So it's going directly to the organization, um, and as well as dealing with CS 125 and a few other schools within CB9. We also received a request from Roast to Success that Madison and Ms. Yusa actually sent out um, regarding um, summer youth programming, summer youth jobs, and they're requesting to place summer youth within some of the firms within our um, community. Take it away, Shanika. No, that's it. That's the main thing I wanted to say about the libraries, and uh, we need to gear our young people back. They have a really slow, like middle school and high school don't really come but they have gaming they have uh, computers and they have tutoring so we need to try to get our young people back so that's that's my main thing excellent walter you have a hand up um i'm really sad to hear about the, how the mayor wants to cut the budgets to the libraries and i'm also happy to hear that the, the, these summer programs will go on in spite of so I'm hoping that he and or the city council can reconsider for that because the libraries are very important. That's it. And has, has ever, thank you, Walter, for saying that. I don't know if everyone has signed a petition. Thanks. I mean, obviously you don't have to, but I'll send it out uh, to Ms. Yutha if it hasn't been sent out. But there is a petition going around for the libraries to sign and get their, to get your support. So please do, they need your support. When we were younger, you know, Lydia talked about how the libraries were open like seven days a week, late at night. It's always been a beacon of not just intelligence, but just Secure. where we can create our future because yes. knowledge is power, you yes. know? So you want to have full access to those things. And in a time where they're, sorry, I'm going over three minutes. In a time where they're trying to ban books, it's in incredibly important to me. So. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. No, and no, keep kids off the street. Soapbox. Also, keep kids off the street. I haven't well, received the petition, so I, I would please resend it. I'll, yes. I'll send it to Miss Yutha if that's okay. Miss Yutha, and ask you know to send it to uh, all of us. And, Absolutely, and I, it was discussed at my district service cabinet meeting as well. Oh, okay. The librarian um, Janelle uh, Carter oh, will be sending it to me. So if you can, okay. I will definitely be sending it out tomorrow. 
I wanted to add uh, the tickets for the Liberty game. Has 3333 been included, Giovanni, the TA president? I am not sure, but I will check with Gia. Zia. Okay. I mean, the reason why he's giving Grant and Manhattanville because they have they have youth programming within the community board. I mean, within their community, the housing authority. And uh, but I'll check with him in reference to Giovanni. Okay. Yeah, they have youth youth programming, and as a matter of fact, he said that um the Liberty did camp um Grant because they have a they have a basketball camp, they have a summer camp. I mean, they have an ongoing basketball camp, so that uh, that has already met with the Liberty. So that was one of the the reasoning behind why they were distributed in those particular areas. So I'll reach out. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Yusa. Thank you, Yusa. Um, Daria. Um, yes, ladies, uh, co-chairs. I wonder if we all know all of us in here know what the libraries are about. We know what they used to be. We know what they could be. And I think we're just all lamenting. The budget is being cut is because they're being underutilized. And I wonder if there can be any intersection between the arts and um, youth education and libraries to possibly draw some attention, maybe draw the kids, draw people back That's to true the um to the libraries that's that's the first thing um so i i hope we can talk offline or if, if anybody has any ideas about how we can maybe utilize the arts and arts organizations to help with that the other thing is i heard something on set today and i'm wondering if you all had heard about it um that i heard that there was a class I'm not sure when, I believe it was last year and people were up in arms. I had never heard of it until today that Columbia was offering a class uh, a, that was literally how to Reimagine. rework Harlem. <laughs> yeah, I know. How yeah. to rework Harlem to make it safer for Columbia students and residents. Oh. Uh, did you, is that true? And if well, so, go ahead. That was published when? No. I don't know if it was published. I'm so sorry to cut you off, Daria. Please excuse me. Um, all I was going to say was we did hear about that class. I don't know if it was worded that way. I think the title of the class oh. was um, A Reimagining of Harlem, A Vision for 21st Century, uh, something to do with education, like a vision for 21st century education or something like that. But they didn't, it wasn't quite as direct as you said it. Um, but yeah, they canceled that class, if I recall. They uh, discontinued it. Yeah, it was, um, I remember reading about it in Amsterdam News. It yep. was, uh, what was the class? Um, well, see, I'm Googling it now. Designing, <laughs> it was something about uh, uh, designing a better Harlem or something, but it was supposed to be co-designing uh, co smart cities which I think was what Barbara Askins was working on. Remember, because I think it was Esther Fuchs was the professor. Oh, Esther Fuchs. Which, you know. Um, I think she presented to the community board too. She did. She got yeah. very upset at one yeah. point. Yeah. What um, is she gonna Okay, well. Okay. I must have been 2021. Because I brought up 1968. Um, oh, wow. But the, uh, it was co-designing smart cities and they were working on, you know, they were looking at Harlem, um, specifically 125th Street Corridor, working with the bid. Um, oh, Solomon always comes through. Solomon, you're amazing. Okay. Oh, okay. I so. think oh. The, the the idea was really good, but I think what had people in such an uproar was that it was like Harlem specifically versus um, many other pockets that we could look at. It, very, it felt very much like uh, more colonization by Columbia, I think, for a lot of people that live up here. So. Yeah, yeah, I was horrified. And I was also um, kind of concerned that I'm on the community board and I'm at all these meetings and I didn't hear about it. Um, so I, I don't really kind of quick. I feel like that 
you know, it went over my, it went over my head and like, that's something that we can't miss. You know what I mean? Like it just, yeah. I'm, yeah. listen, uh, y'all might, might've already gotten your chance to be upset about it or concerned about it last year. I just found <laughs> out this morning. So I'm going to, so so I understand. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so that's a good, you know, that's a good point, though, that we can bring up some of these news articles. I mean, we have like we have group chats, we have email and we can be discussing this even if not during the meeting. So that's a good point. Um, yeah, I, I, I would, definitely understand stuff. Some of this stuff, because that does on one hand, it could be, oh, redesigning smart cities. On the other hand, mm -hmm. like you said, it sounds like we're going to make it. Oh, we're going to make it better for us and mm -hmm. for them like how are you going to make it better for me when you don't know me <laughs> and and you just you know what I mean and, and your people and haven't got yeah, here yeah haven't made any I effort the, the concept is good at the, but the thing is we have to have enough representation in our community yeah. involved with it yeah and because it could go thing, real wrong how, how it's nothing wrong with a, you know making for say a better community, a better Harlem and, and picture an ideal situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the community is always needs to be involved with it rather than having it sound like somebody else thought of it. Oh, let's take it to, to them, you know, and yeah. it's our idea. Columbia is not in any position to say what, you know, will make us better without us like you said anyway i'm, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. get off my soapbox i'm just going through something thank yeah. you <laughs> and real quick i just want to say to you daria that we um the libraries some of the committees that were present actually reached out to some of the librarians about having their uh shows and their things there at the libraries as well um opera on tap and uh who was the other one it wasn't the bait league it was someone else deirdre may have to step in but anyway that's a great idea. We're on it. And yes, let's talk offline. Great. Sounds good. All right. Thank Sorry. you. Um, uh, Heather, um, we'll go to you next for uh, Landmarks Preservation and Parks. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good we'll evening. To... <laughs> Thanks. Um, we had a very lively meeting, um, a lot of attendance, um, a lot of things of interest in the community. Um, we have a new regional manager for the New York City Parks, and that is Mark Vaccaro. He stepped in um, for our, our usual um, participants and provided a couple of updates. The path that was um, has started construction at the northern end of Morningside Park from West 120th along the lower path is expected to um, take about a month for completion. The Jacob Schiff seating area is to be completed this summer. Um, in terms of Morningside Park, please look out for some art installations to take place this summer. Um, in terms of Friends of St. Nicholas Park, they um, they had a great turnout at the Easter egg hunt on Earth Day. It's My Park Day is scheduled for Saturday, May 20th. The Youth Gardening Program in conjunction with Morningside Park is scheduled to start in June. The High School Math and Science um, Tuesday Volunteer Group um, they organize to clean up the park. And there's a Saturday weed gardening group that tackles other issues in the park. Um, the, and in terms of Riverside Park, the permits have been increasing. So if you know if you want to have an activity or something in the park, please get your permit applications in as early as possible. In terms of the Riverside Park outreach, there's over 282 free public programs scheduled for the park. So things such as exercise classes, concerts, children's programming. Um, so look out for, and, and this is programming from 59th Street to 180, I think 181st or 184th Street. They're still seeking applicants from the um, from high school youth in community in our community district. These are paid internships for 18 youth, specifically in CB9 between the ages of 13 and 18, to focus on horticulture and, and environment. 
So um, I'll try to put, let's, I'll see if I can put that in, in the chat for youth opportunities. Sa Saturday, May 13th is Sensational Day where, where they will be cleaning out all the sand in the sandboxes around Riverside Park. Um, Baja, let's see, on her block, West 137th Street, they're having a block planting day on Saturday, May 13th, between nine and noon. At the Hort, they're accepting school field trips on Wednesday through Friday. Um, I think they can handle students or classes up to, I think she said 100, 150, something like that. So um, they have daily, almost daily programs. I think they're currently operating six out of the seven days a week at the Hort at Riverbank State Park. Um, in terms of Denny Farrell Riverbank State Park, I won't repeat um, the announcement youth already took care of, but um, they're urging to please get the New York State Parks Explorer app that will give up-to-date hours for programming and updates and any cancellations. The track and field project is ongoing. There were some unexpected drainage issues, which has complicated the matter. Therefore, the project completion time um, has been extended and now it will be completed by the end of the summer instead of June. The locker room renovations in the aquatics department will begin after the anniversary celebration on June 17th, so it'll be a bit challenging for swimmers. There was, um, as a result of the heavy rains that we had for a few days, it caused some problems to the facade in the um, passageway between the two buildings. So they have cut off that that pedestrian passageway is closed to patrons and the staff. So they just wanted people to be aware of that. Um, and then we had an um, interesting presentation from Wendy Hilliard of the Wendy Hilliard Gymnastics Foundation. She's been running that foundation for over 25 years. She was the first black to compete for the United States Rhythmic uh, Gymnastics competed in three world championships and coached an uh, Olympic athlete. She's in the Hall of Fame and has had a long career with gymnastics and is president of the Women's Sports Foundation. Um, she was looking to, um, they provide free and low cost gymnastic programs. And um, as many of us know, gymnastics is a very expensive sport. They um, held Saturday classes at Riverbank State Park for about 10 years between 2008 and 2018. And they are um, currently looking or um, to find a permanent space for their gymnastics foundation. They are currently in partnership with the Harlem Children's Stone and the Harlem Armory, where the majority of their programs are currently offered. So um, they need a dedicated gymnastics center, just as, you know, if you're in the sport of swimming, you know, a swimming pool is a des designated space. There's only one really large gymnastics facility in Manhattan, and that's at Chelsea Piers, which is about 18,000 square feet. Um, again, they offer low class classes, about $30 an hour, and a private gymnast um, session would normally charge about $75 an hour. So it was determined that Riverbank State Park just does not have any space available. There's no physical space for a dedicated gymnastics center. And what they used to do was sort of um, set up the facility during and then take it down and um, they used to do that, I believe, in the theater. So it was suggested that maybe the fairway, the vacant um, space could be a possibility um, through Columbia University and the CBA. However, Lofton chimed in and said that that won't be possible because Columbia is planning to um, replace the former fairway with another supermarket. So, um, they're, you know, just looking for um, support from the community board and helping them find a dedicated gymnastics space. And I will um, hold off my comments for our other um, the um, the other presentation that we had on the um, 
um, the Mamirini, and that's it. All right, thank you, Heather. I'm not seeing any hands, so we'll go to uh, Ms. Dunn and Ms. Adewume for the um, Economic Development West Harlem Peers Committee report. Oh, okay, I was looking for something unfortunate because I've been a bit not on the best of feelings. I can't do all that. I did have a meet, I happened to meet the new head of the Parks Department and I can't find the paperwork on him now. But I sent him an email and told him out of the current funds that they're holding, dedicated funds, would they kindly provide two quarter parties at the West Harlem Piers? Would they uh, uh, fix the crosswalks where the bikes go by because it's not properly marked in that area? So that is safe, as well as a pedestrian crossing in that area. Uh, and there was one other thing. There was the St. Clair's Place, the water. There's a third thing I'm not saying. But anyway, those were the things that I actually did reach out to the new gentleman at the Parks Department and ask him to address that issue. I have not heard back from them as to whether or not they've done anything about it. And I have not reached out to him for a second time at all. That's my update as far as that. As far as economic development, yes, we are still very active with the recognition of the West Harlem Distinguished Businesses. But I don't want to say too much more about it just yet because things are not really finalized. Hopefully by the end of this month, everything will be finalized and occurred. Correct report will be able to be made. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Joyce. Yes. Um, okay. I just wanted to um, thank Jonathan for always writing the uh, minutes for us. He does huh? such an amazing job. Thank yes. you. Yes. Um, just want to point out that. The minutes that was submitted has a wrong date. It says March. It right. May. And also, Joy Sadawumi was excused, not absent. Um, so, but nevertheless, I don't want to take away anything from the great work that you're doing, Jonathan. <laughs> the minister, right. really, I'm sorry, I forgot the other. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> wrong date, Jonathan. Du duly noted. Um, Daria, you have your hand up. Yes, really quickly. Um, I got a chance to go to the economic development meeting for the first time, and we did have a lively discussion about the uh, marine transfer station and the possibility of it um, being um, a cannabis uh, facility growing in educational facility. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you for the note of no, the, the information. Thanks, Darren. Um, Signe, do you want to give the report for housing, zoning, and land use? And then I think um, that's it for most of the committees except strategic planning. Yep. Thanks for letting me go last here. I was on a bus. Uh, hey, everyone. How are you? Good evening. Hey, Signe. Hi, Hi, honey. <laughs> uh yes we had a busy meeting uh quite a few presentations quite a few action items we were hopping in may so just briefly because a lot of the presentations also were action items which we're going to discuss later but just to give you a brief synopsis sean rickenbacker from uh the ccny um uh, uh the, max the, bond max bond thank you uh, we had a good meeting with him a few weeks back, Liz, Barry, and I, and we continue to have a strong partnership with them, connecting with our educational experts so that we can work together in the community, find um, ways to work together to better our, our community. And uh, so he has another grant that they are looking to get that is a research center of excellence uh, from HUD. Uh, and so he he went through that with us. He he described a little bit about um, what the grant would be for. They've not won that grant yet. They're asking for a letter of support from us to help strengthen their grant proposal. 
Um, we are going to go through that later um, uh, as an action item, so I don't want to go into too much detail to make this short, but um, uh, that is the first presentation we had. And then we had Vince Morgan from the HDFC Resource Center, WHDC, uh, came and spoke with us, um, and uh, we had a we had a good uh, discussion with him uh, about the plans. Uh, it's very still, you know, not totally open. It's open. He's taking, you know, calls and things like that. They don't have a a full on space and and uh, you know, hours and all of that yet. He's still working with partners in the community to understand what is needed. Um, but uh, there is um, a lot of input that that Liz and I gave, and and um, he's been working with the right people. It sounds like to work on what what is going to be available. And uh, Vic, yes, if Vic is on, we did ask your question. <laughs> um, and I'm going to uh, defer to the the recording for you to listen to his answer, because I, I don't want to, you know, um, uh, I don't want to miss anything. I want you to hear it directly from him. Um, but more or less, um, they're definitely wanting to, you know, be looking into other forms of, you know, uh, electricity, working away from oil and that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, Aubrey Walks, Audrey, no, it's Audrey, I think. Yeah, Audrey Walks from uh, from the city. There's some text amendments coming up. Um, of course, that's a ULERP process. City of Yes text amendments, they're called. Uh, it's part of the Mayor Adams Get Stuff Built plan. <laughs> Um, and so the first text amendment is coming upon us. It will be the ending of that cycle will be in July. So we're now in the phase of community board discussion and community board recommendations. We'll have to have a public hearing on that. Um, but city of yes, there is a presentation she showed us, um, a, a lot of environmental, um, you know, parameters, uh, for the city and housing, um, and uh, happy to share that presentation with folks. If you want to read more about that, we will have a public hearing on it. Um, and uh, uh, that was from Audrey. Um, and the last presentation was regarding Child's Memorial at 1763 Amsterdam Avenue. Um, so <laughs> Barry mentioned earlier, you know, with there's a lot of um, issues with staffing uh, and that has affected some of what we're dealing with with a child's memorial and the Vedats who are the developers there. Um, you know, it's it's been a long journey with that site and we have a, a letter of support that will be discussed later. Barry discuss, uh, mentioned that earlier and there will definitely be some discussion around that. But uh, the Vedats have come to us. Um, we've discussed with them, you know, thoughts, but there is a timeline, there is a deadline that they are on because of um, uh, everything that happened with Tish James's office, and they gave them a two-year deadline to have something built, which puts us in a bit of a, a bind, uh, and we'll talk more about that at the um, action items section. Um, and then... Uh, Let's see, new business, Barry. Yes, I saw your email about Trihill Tenants Coalition. Um, and that was the major bulk of what we discussed. There was a lot of presentations, a lot of discussion um, on the action items, and we will be presenting those in a little bit. Uh, Daria, Daria, you have your hand up. Daria? Legacy hand, sorry. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, thank you, Signy, and I will note that we'll need to amend the agenda to add the yes. CCNY letter of support because I forgot it um, <laughs> at the beginning. Um, so that being said, um, are there any questions for Signy about her report? Oh, um. Can you hear me? Let me see. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, Signe, I know I sent you a, a, a question on it, but 
uh, if you were Barry have an answer, I've gotten several calls related to 1727 Amsterdam and what the latest news might be. I'm just wondering if there's any information you can share beyond, uh, I guess, good news that the city in fact needs, uh, uh, owns the land, which Barry reported a couple of meetings ago. Um, and uh, I know they're trying to uh, earlier, they stated earlier uh, that they were trying to get heritage health and housing out uh, very quickly, but I know that they are lawyered up. So, I mean, there are still things happening, but I'm one, and then a mirror body is no longer representing HHC. So uh, is there anything oh. else? Yeah, there was a letter he sent. Hmm. Okay. I know I'm not the only one who got it. I didn't see anything, so that's interesting. Amir Abadi? Uh, no, I know who he is. But I didn't see anything. Yes, the see district me. office was Sorry. alerted, and I also sent the replacement information. Okay. Edwin, yeah, I didn't I get the replacement. Well, I didn't see the replacement information, but um, do you remember? I'll look for it. You, the um, replacement uh, person, people, I should say, are Okenfe Labarti, um, who was his supervisor, and um, Iman Musani. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any update, maybe how we should proceed? Should we do a resolution or some kind of letter stating I, what we... I think it may be time to do a formal public reso, yeah because we've been we've held off on doing it thus far. Mm -hmm. um, but they're coming back to us next month. Oh, they are. Have they confirmed okay. that so with you? So, Sydney, can nothing. our committee work with you on that, do a joint resolution? Yeah, help they, yeah, that would make sense. Yes, that would make sense. They just they just emailed me this evening. Ah. Oh. Ah, OK, OK. Uh, are they looking for a presentation all over again? I will. Uh, I'll send, I'll forward it to to both committees. Okay. okay. Um, Victor, do you have a report from strategic planning? Uh, yes, I'll be very quick with it. We um, held a meeting on April eighteenth and went over three items from the CBA. The first item refers to. Um, West Island Development Corp working with Columbia on a creating a bulk oil purchasing group for local HDFCs. So I had spoken to um, Ziad about that as well, and also um, greening measures for HDFCs. So he had expressed that a lot of they're getting away from oil, which I know, and they already had an oil plan, but I said we could use it for solar and other things for HDFCs doing something in bulk. So he said that uh, Vince Morgan would look into that. I haven't spoken directly with him yet, but I look forward to speaking with him. The other item was, as uh, Jonathan mentioned, 5,000 square feet of artist space on the campus of Columbia University, along with Columbia providing technical and business, of, business advice for local arts and cultural organizations. This is something that's been on the books for a while, but they have not explored it. So I'm hoping now they're starting to move on it uh, through Michael Palmer. I uh, saw so, um, they're pushing, kind of pushing this forward. So I'm hoping that will move for our arts organizations in the community. And the uh, other item we discussed was um, MBA students ho helping local businesses. And the CBA specifies that at the request of West Holland Development Corp, that um, MBA students from Columbia will help uh, local businesses, entrepreneurs with um, fostering their business. So during the discussion, we talked about using possibly using empty storefronts that would be closer to residents rather than stores going onto the campus. Um, someone mentioned participation, participants getting stipends for this work as well and also working with the Columbia Small Business Development Center, all kind to foster this relationship with the community and um, Columbia. Um, so that, that's items we'll discuss. 
uh, the senior fair was mentioned and it was a great event. A lot of people came out. I mean, it was overflowing into the streets. People were still talking about it days after as I was in the community. So uh, kudos to your team, uh, Walter, and the uh, youth or your team did an excellent job getting things done. Everybody else that volunteered. And um, also, Pat Waller Johnson mentioned through capital projects that there would be an elevator installed at the 137th and Broadway subway station. So that was news, great news there. And we're still looking at the 125th Street elevator. I know um, O'Donnell's office is still working on that and Pat's reporting as things goes and keeping us up to date. That yeah, we hope to get something by June, hear more information by June, I'm sorry. Okay, so sure, that's good. Um, that was kind of it, just keeping it brief. Any questions? When do you meet next, June? Um, June, yes. All right, are there any further questions for Victor? <sighs> All right, thank you, Victor. Um, mm -hmm. That concludes our committee reports. Um, we will now, sorry, did somebody say something? Yes, reports from other task force members. Oh, yes, sorry, I forgot that Miriam wasn't here, but you you, you can give the report for cannabis. Thank you, Monique. Thank you. It'll be quick as well. Um, it seems so, so long ago, but we had an event at Columbia as well in April. Um, we had brought it before the um, executive committee before it was supposed to be, uh, or it was an education event um, to help bring more awareness regarding um, all the positive things that we want people to know about cannabis besides people walking on the street and blowing uh, smoke in your face. Um, the event was well attended because it was on, considering it was on a Tuesday, very well attended, held at the forum. Um, uh, I would say hundred, about 150 people or so came and joined us. And it was a really great um, discussion um, from our many presenters and panelists. Um, I didn't um, include the um, agenda with this report and I apologize for that, but we um, engaged with a number of vendors in the lobby, different vendors who are in the space um, doing creative things. And then in terms of presenters, the panelists, we included a word legacy from our community and they are, uh, were well received and there was a number of questions um, from the audience. Um, and I'm trying to see what else. Daria already, oh, and Daria is on, so she can add um, if she um, thinks I forgot anything. Um, but um, I wanted to go through the report quickly and ask Daria to jump in since she's been to many of the same meetings that I'm in. Um, we talked about last time in our meeting, um, working on some new regulation and guidelines. Um, and we're actively working on um, a template that we received from CB5. We're working on making those changes and edits to see um, um, and making sure they're applicable to our community board. And we'll share with the executive committee, obviously, um, for uh, comment, feedback uh, before, I guess we take the next step maybe to adapt anything. Um, at the meeting, uh, Ken Miles, he came and gave us some updates regarding the 125th Street bid um, uh, legal dispensary and its um, possible um, setup. Uh, he shared an article with us and it's in the minutes. Basically in, in the New York Times, an article came out stating that the Harlem businesses were suing to stop the uh, erection or establishment of any cannabis dispensary on 125th Street at this moment. Um, so uh, there's no other movement on that for now. Um, hopefully, or hopefully between Ken and um, the rest of us, we'll keep you posted on what's happening with that. And um, we are working on, since we did such a great job engaging with the community and wanna say once again, 
thanks to Happy Monkey, uh, a legacy um, from our community for helping us um, increase awareness about um, legal cannabis. And we are looking to plan an event in the summer, a follow-up event to um, continue the positive momentum that we are trying to establish in our community around this budding industry. And um, I think that is uh, it. Um, Daria, did you wanna add anything? Yeah, along with Happy Monkey and the legacy, um, people who were involved, uh, Borough President Mark Levine was the MC or the um, moderator oh, yeah. of the yeah. panels. There were some people from OCM there. Um, Vicky Anna Reyes from um, uh, Mega Evers um, Cannabis um, class, the, the, the degree program, she was there. And I can't name everyone, but um, there were some excellent panels. Also, uh, the vendors sparked a conversation um, and really sparked in me being on the Cannabis Task Force and trying to learn as much as I can for the community's sake. Um, I realized that there were some vendors there that were in the medical space. And I realized that <clears throat> although uh, medical has been legal for the last 12 years or so, uh, it was put in place sort of as a secret where people didn't know, you don't know who the doctors are and um, they're not allowed to um, advertise or anything like that. I, I'm not sure, maybe that's our task force, but someone needs to look into that because first of all, the, their hands are tied in a certain way. I attended a, something that um, CB10 had and, and, and asked the OCM directly about that because at this point it's all legal, but the medical part, which could be helping so many people is still like top secret. And so that is something that needs to be looked at. And we're looking at that. Someone also brought up the fact uh, that cannabis is also hemp, is, is part of the conversation, which is not about getting high at all. Um, it, it's uh, very economic and we are uh, looking to further those conversations. All right, thank you both. Um... Can I ask, oh, are you done with the committees at the end? I just wanted to ask something, Chair, uh, add something to the, my committee report, one of the committee oh, reports. Oh, to the health committee. Okay, yeah, go ahead. No, no. Brief, to, very actually, quickly. Uh, yeah, actually, the uh, thank you, Youth uh, Madison, Hakil. The intent to run form is in this set of uh, documents uh, tonight. So uh, if you look at the re the last uh, email that uh, you mailed out regarding this meeting, it is one of the the documents, one of the PDFs, and it is entitled "Intent to Run." Okay. It's actually that's Monique's uh, intent to run form that has been completed. Oh my goodness! I didn't open. I just saw intent to run. Okay. All right. But I uh, I emailed asking if it could be sent uh, out. I'll try to see if I can post it. All if right. Well, we will we will get it sent out, and there is a form on the website, correct? Yes. Great. Um, so with that, we'll wrap up the report section, and we'll go into action items. I'm going to request unanimous consent to add a sixth action item, free liquor licenses for that letter of support regarding the City College application for the HUD grant. I neglected to do so um, earlier in the evening when we were amending the agenda. So I would request unanimous consent on that if anyone wants to second. So move, second. Second. All right, anyone opposed to adding that to the agenda? Going once, going twice, okay. Um, so we will move on to the first action item, which is a letter of a ratification of the letter of support sent regarding the uh, Osborne organization. Um, give me just a moment. Uh, let me pull that up. 
That's a ratification, I think you said. Yes. Share. Sharing screen. All right, here we are. So this is something we did over email, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, does anyone have any questions? This was to this was an uh, application for the DOJ for juvenile justice and delinquency prevention, uh, a grant for the Osborne Group. Uh, Ted here. Uh, I suggest we unanimously consent to putting this on the uh, program for next week. I second that. Okay. Second. Moved PM's consent by Ted, seconded by Daria. Is anyone opposed to adding this to next Wednesday, Thursday's general board meeting agenda? Going once, going twice. Okay, it is now on the agenda. Thank you for that. Thank you everyone for your fast responses over email as well on that initially. The next item on the agenda is the resolution for a May 2023 addendum to our May 2017 resolution regarding the TIL program. I um, have that on my screen if you wanna sh hit share screen for me. Yes, please, one moment. Thank you for that. Um, you should be able to share now. Okay. Let me know when you can see it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Barry, for quickly writing this while you were writing notes and on our meeting the other night. <laughs> Wunderkind to that you are. So everyone may remember it. Well, maybe you don't, but in 2017, I guess that's 16, six years now. Uh, we wrote a rezo to halt uh, uh, H, uh, HPD from uh, um, halting the transfer of buildings, uh, and things have progressed. Things have happened. Uh, ANCP now is in, in the works, and so we're asking for a re-up and addendum to that to just remind everyone that this is still hot on our minds. Barry, since you drafted this, do you want to um, give any uh, special note on this other than the committee has uh, passed this um, to put onto the agenda? So, Yes, very quickly, as a reminder, tenant interim lease buildings are buildings owned by the city of New York. They entered the city entered into agreement with the tenants of the buildings that the tenants would run the buildings as a tenant association uh, in exchange for giving up and and give up their rent regulated leases in exchange for the option to buy their apartments for $250. This is how HDFCs, most HDFCs were born. Um, however, the city eventually decided it didn't actually want to give up the buildings. And the, many of those buildings have been in limbo for 10, 20, 25 years. Uh, these people are running these buildings on behalf of the city of New York with no compensation for 30 years, 20 years, whatever. Um, and the city is trying to transfer the buildings from till to a new program, the Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, which would load the buildings up with debt before they become HDFCs. Some of these buildings, by the way, didn't even become HDFCs, and uh, you know, I think I think someone here, you know, may have had a family member in a situation where there was a building that was in till that that got given to a nonprofit developer and is not an HDFC. It's in fact still a rental. So we are also urging that the city council and the mayor put a hundred at least a hundred million dollars into the FY twenty four capital budget for renovations of till buildings, not through ANCP. And then we attached our resolution from six dang years ago. <laughs> well, I think we should have unanimous consent on this. All I right, Member Hardiman has request unanimous consent to add this to the agenda for next Thursday's general board. Member Henry has seconded. Is anyone opposed to adding this to the agenda for Thursday? Going once, going twice. All right, it has been added to the agenda for Thursday by unanimous consent. 
The next item is the letter of support for 611 West 112th Street, docket number LPC 2308973 for certificate of appropriateness for the building known as the Moranime. Um, Not me, so I'll stop sharing. Let me, let me pull that up. Um, I had it all open. Letter of support. Nope, that's the ratification. Um, 611. Here we go. So, Heather, this is your letter of support here. Okay. Um, 611 West 112. Let's do you, do you want me to eventually provide a visual? Does anyone need to see a visual or do you want me to just read through? I'll read through the letter first and then if you have questions, I'll show you a visual. Yeah, yeah. give us the highlights and then we'll transfer over to the visual. Okay, um, the highlights is that this um, Columbia University bought this building February of last year. It is currently a SRO um, restricted property. Um, that was typically would have provided housing for rent stabilized um, tenants. It's been vacant in a dilapidated condition for 10 to 15 years. Um, this property was originally constructed to house large um, apartments of six or seven rooms, meaning two and three bedroom apartments. Um, the applicant is seeking to install a new cornice, windows, a barrier-free access ramp, front entrance doors, and remove the existing roll-down gate. Um, it's, the building is, um, has a historic symmetrical um, tripartite facade, in, um, which should be maintained. So our committee, everyone seemed to be in agreement that it was nice that the cornice is being um, recreated and um, that the diamond um, pattern on the windows should, you know, should be restored um, at the locations where they originally were. Um, and you know we support, of course, the um, the maintenance of any water infiltration issues, masonry repairs, noise mitigating structures surrounding the rooftop mechanical sustainability features such as the green roof, and and we believe that there should be some ADA accessibility. However, um, the barrier free ramp that is being proposed, it it's disrupts the historic character of the primary entrance of the facade by replacing a window that contributes to the symmetry of the facade with a second entrance that includes a panel transom. So they're placing a second door um, right next to the primary entrance door, and it's just sort of interfering with the um, the the balance of the way the property is um, viewed and um i'm suggesting that they look at maybe a vertical platform lift into the area way because um the 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 ramp that they're proposing is just only slightly more than three feet, and it doesn't give the standard ADA turning diameter of 60 inches. So if they were to do a um, a lift down into the area way where they have, they mentioned that there was already a service um, or, or a, a door entry um, down there, that that could be a possibility so that therefore there wouldn't be a disruption in the facade. And then the community, of course, had many other issues, one being that um, with Columbia turning this um, rent stabilized building into housing that initially will be for Columbia undergraduate students while they're renovating other dormitories on campus, that it would take away a, um, permanent affordable housing from the community. They're concerned about noise during construction, noise after the completion in the rear yard by undergraduate students. They requested um, that the layout of where they have a faculty staff apartment in the cellar be um, 
um, exchanged for the, um, um, let's see, there was a, a, a common space that would be in that area. So the, the letter did pass in the committee with one person abstaining. All right, thank you. If we can get a brief view of that ramp that you were talking about, I think that'll be helpful. Okay, if um, someone can give me permission to share, then I can you, bring up. You should have permission now. Okay, I do now. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where did I do this? Thought I had it up here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Okay, this the this is a historic photo. This sort of shows the original layout. You see, these are all three. This is a three-bedroom apartment originally. These are all two-bedroom apartments. Let me get to the ramp. Um, this shows the original area way. Um, they, they, this is one feature that they're not putting back. They are adding the, the, the cornice back to the building. These are the existing conditions right now. You see how the cornice is removed from the building. This is the area way that they covered area way that they want to turn into a ramp. There's no way to um, use the same entrance door that everyone else will use. So they want to cut out this window and make this window a door, which will disrupt the symmetry of the front of the facade. There's this roll down gate that they are going to replace with the um, door. I was thinking that because there's already this opening right here that goes into the area way and there's these doors down here that um, just the simple I'm not lift. Sure. Hold on. I'm not sure people can see what you're um, talking about with that area way. Can you scroll up a little bit so it's centered? Yeah, let's see. You mean this right here? Um, over no, no, here? No, 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 no. Down to where you're talking about adding a better place for the ramp. There we go. Okay. Oh, okay, here. And I can enlarge it if that's easier for people. I notice they have this opening right here on the left side. So this, in my opinion, could be an area where they could just add a down lift. And then there's an opening, a door, and they've closed off some of the doors or made doors or their other windows down here. And it would be less disruptive to this level area of windows. And I'll show you a picture that shows the symmetry that's a little off to me. So there's already this opening. I was thinking maybe a down lift um, into that area. And I'll just show you a couple of other photos quickly. So this shows the existing elevation and the proposed. If you look at this picture right here, you see these four windows. This is the center of the building. And then there's the four windows here. They want to change it to this. They want to change this window to a door. And then you'll only have three windows over here instead of the four. And then you still have this space here. And then they're going to infill this area here where I showed you previously was the, the open area way. So they're going to infill this and make this a ramp. And they're going to get rid of the light from the windows that goes into this space. And one of the historic features about this building is that it was known for be being a building that had a lot of light coming into the space, into these large apartments. Got it. And you mentioned the turning radius is not the full 60 inches. No, and that was, yeah, the, the, the size of their ramp is just a little bit over three feet. And so going into the ramp, it does not give the standard ADA turning radius of 60 inches. So to try to turn into this door, adding a door, a second door, when you have the main door right here, it's it's my I don't know what other people think. I I brought this up during the discussion. 
it's bothersome to me, but it wasn't enough for me not to approve, but I just think that they should work with staff to um, find another alternative for this ramp because they, they gave us line of sight drawings. So nothing on the roof is visible from the street, but we are talking about the primary facade of this property. And we, you know, we get bent out of shape when they're adding a rooftop addition that's visible from the street, but right looking right directly at the building itself and you're going to change the original historic character of the building where you have these four windows on either side of the main entrance and create a new door here and then infill this area where there used to be light from coming in through these windows down here yeah is not to in my opinion not a good idea but um living down isn't that the basement or something i'm going to show you the i'm going to show you the floor plan because this is one of our asks is we asked to see the floor plans this is another view of what the ramp they're proposing will do they're going to add another piece of railing and here too the door also, here oh heather if the wheelchair cannot rotate the proper uh what do you say 60 degrees to wire 60. that's standard ada but they uh -huh. when i asked the question they gave another well this is a you know con, kind of like a semi-turn so it's not really achieving the true purpose in my opinion um and there's there are other alternatives and i just think it's too tight of a turn with only about yeah. three feet here Heather, I, th I think we've got the good overview of the most salient point, which is that um, <laughs> ramp. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions for Heather. This is another um, final view here of what, so th th they're showing this whole area infill. They would enter here and go through that door. That's another good picture for people to see. And then there's just one more. Let me just show you the floor plan and that's it. The cornice is fine. We didn't have any issues there. Um, so this is what their new floor plans will look like. Um, and I mentioned that there's a an apartment. So this is a common space area right here. And they're going to put a faculty staff apartment in the cellar right here. The people in the community were asking for the staff apartment to be on this site because this is adjacent to 400 Riverside Drive and to put the common area over here. And they're concerned about the backyard noise here. Yeah. And um, and so this gives you the idea. These are all going to just be individual rooms. You see there are no closets in here. They're um, for the student housing. And yeah, the green. They'll, they'll have armoires knowing yeah. Columbia. And, and yeah. then the other thing I heard them say is that they have to expand the elevator anyway. So if they came into the building right here into the cellar, then they can still get through this circulation area to the elevator to take them up to all the other floors instead of disrupting the facade of the building by changing that main window into a door and and those were the points and if please if anyone else has any other ideas um you know i i, I like that they're including these sound barriers around the condensing units on the roof but again this is another um noted but heather okay. i'm going to ask that we That's that it. we vote on this to add it to the agenda because as you can see from the person who has joined me here to my right, it is almost dinner time for cats. Um, so, all right, is there a motion? Any questions? Or any questions, yeah. Okay. Um, unanimous so any... consent to- Secretary Coble, I request unanimous consent, seconded by member Alexander. Anyone opposed to adding this to the agenda, please say, uh, please speak now. Going once. Going twice. Yeah. All right. It has been added to the agenda by unanimous consent. Now, please um, read the letter and, and give me your feedback prior to Tuesday so that we can make any amendments prior to the general board, please. Yeah, it, it looked like a brilliantly written letter, letter Heather. Um, oh, thank you, so Barry. I don't get it, that enough. Thank you. Well, it, 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 I mean, it was very well done. Um, I was, I'm, I'm proud, I'm proud that that's coming out of our board. Um, Signe, 
You are once again up. We're um, back. We're back. Okay. Which one? 1763. Okay. Okay. Should I admit I had tears over this, Barry? I don't know. (laughs) I think we've all cried about this. Yeah. Um, All right, everyone. A six, another six year journey. No more than that, I think, but uh, We all are familiar with Child's Memorial Site, which uh, was the church where uh, the only church that would take Malcolm X's funeral um, at the time of his death. And uh, that church was torn down. Um, There was a promise by a developer that they would build a new church and and a new building there. Of course, uh, just before April passed, there was uh, a plan for DHS to put in a shelter and uh, that we we, um, had a press uh, gamut about and wanted to have more family housing, more uh, affordable housing for families, more sustainable housing for families. Um, Anyway, uh, it's gone through a lot of uh, back and forth. The the latest you probably all know about is that the Attorney General, Tish James' office, uh, had a suit um, or a case against the pastor of that church. um, And among the, um, the the settlements there was that they the developer, um, which the church still wants to work with, uh, the dots, uh, had only two years to build them a new building. Um, it did not say what kind of building. It didn't have any, you know, talk about that. It was just a new building with the church, uh, with space for the church. Um, and so with two years and limited staff, uh, there is a, you know, issue of, what is going to go there and and how much we you know can get from uh oh, city planning uh anyway barry i'm trying my hardest here yeah um, I, I can i can i can talk yeah, about you can fill in so some some stuff here yeah the the church was purchased and torn down in 2016 before we knew about it and we were yeah. very upset in January of 2017, I think is about when this meeting happened. The develop, actually, the developers weren't there. It was the church, the city, DHS, and the Urban Resource Institute um, were presenting about the plan for a homeless shelter that was going to consist of all studios for families with children. Yeah. And April Tyler appropriately said, why are you putting families in the studios, number one? And number two, um, you know, we want permanent housing. And number three, um, you know, this, that we're worried that if it's all studios, it will become luxury student housing once you're done using it as a shelter. Um, So we embarked on this journey. Um, The developers agreed to sell the building to Broadway housing communities to be developed as permanent, deeply affordable housing with some supportive housing and the church on the ground floor. Uh, Broadway housing entered into contract to purchase the building. And then the attorney general in her infinite wisdom uh, told Broadway housing, what are you doing? We're not approving of this. Blah, 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 blah. And and Broadway housing in compliance with the attorney general's wishes pulled out of the deal. Um, That was when I cried. Um, The, the, this was a significant blow to us. We had gotten everything we wanted. um, And we met with the charities bureau of the attorney general's office. And we said, it's very important to us that this, you know, include permanent affordable housing, et cetera. And they, the, the attorney general's office told us, we don't care. The only thing we care about is the sanctuary being built. Um, they notably were also very unhelpful with the community garden at 134th Street. 
So two strikes against the attorney general. Hmm. Um, third strike now is that they have mandated a timeline for the construction of this building. Again, they don't actually care what's in the rest of the building. They just care that the building gets built and has a sanctuary in it. So uh, we met with the Vedats. They laid this out for us. We said, well, if you had more space, could we do permanent housing? They're like, yes, absolutely. And then it was, you know, the, the conclusion was that because ULERP would take two years, they would not be able to comply with the attorney general's order. So um, we asked for, and they gave us, um, I think, nine or 10 two-bedroom units for larger families with children, and the rest of the studios are to be used for pregnant mothers or mothers with small toddlers or younger. Um, the, the shelter will also allow pets, which is, it seems like a so what issue, but it's in fact a very big issue. Many homeless families, especially when they're displaced by a fire or an eviction, will try to desperately avoid the shelter system in no small part because they do not want to give up their pets and shelters do not allow pets. This shelter will allow pets. Um, it will also have the space for the church who will own their space as a condominium on the first floor and it will have a parsonage for the pastor now in court. And, um, and however, they are signing an agreement to make permanently affordable housing in a building they own a block up at 1793 Amsterdam Avenue. So the building has market rate apartments. They are committing to make them rent stabilized and lower the rent. Um, how low is to be determined by, you know, if we can get them some tax abatements for doing affordable housing, but even if even without the tax abatements, they're committing to affordability at 80% of AMI. They are also creating a $250,000, well, they're funding to the tune of $250,000, a Hamilton Heights Community Fund to be administered by the New York Community Trust, um, similar to the Morningside Heights Community Fund. Um, with the advising group that will advise the trust on where to spend the money to be community board nine. Um, so it will still be a homeless shelter because our options are homeless shelter or luxury housing. Um, there is no affordable housing solution here because the attorney general's office will not permit it. Um, this is not what we wanted. We, in fact, had our hands on what we wanted, and it was snatched out of them by Tish James. Um, that being said, it's a lot better than what they came to us with in January of 2017. And it's not for lack of trying on their part that we're not getting what we want. So this is the letter of support for the development. Are there any questions? Pat. I, I have um, a question. So there's gonna be a shelter there, a shelter on 145th Street in Amsterdam, right? So there's gonna be more shelters that are being built, no affordable housing. Um, and was this, so are you saying that as a community board, we're supporting the, the building or the construction of this particular shelter? Is that what yes. the letter is proposing? That is the letter. That is what the letter is proposing. It's to address to the Department of Homeless Services. Um, so, and I will note that 145th Street is the the 1727 Amsterdam is not a shelter. It's supportive housing. It's just supportive housing done poorly. Um, okay, because respectfully, they say that it's going to be that, but the the um, Bowery. Um, the, the Bowery BRC is a shelter provider. They only deal with shelters. So they, the fact that that's, they're saying that they're not doing a shelter there, I'm a little questionable about that. I, I am not defending BRC. Yeah, I think it's a bad move. We are fighting this move. But B 
BRC, 75% of what they do is shelter, 25% is supportive housing. We think that they don't have enough experience in supportive housing. We also think the project has way too many studio units for supportive housing, and it will not be a good project. But the financing stream for it will require supportive housing, not shelters. It's it's supportive housing financing from HPD. It's just going to be bad supportive housing. Not that that's any comfort, but yeah, it's not. But um, thank you, yeah, thank you for the yeah. clarification. <laughs> um, area, I know this is your neck of the woods. This is a stone's throw from you. This is my next door neighbor. I'm looking at it right now through my kitchen window. Is there any, I mean, I know Tish James, James is a tough cookie, but is there any thought of us? I mean, can we try to talk, write a letter, write a resolution, write a, anything before we jump on this train? Uh, we did is the answer. Um, we met with them, was it last year? And literally begged them. Um, so this, this, we, we Broadway, had the April okay. Tyler houses to be built by Broadway Housing, one of the best housing developers in our community at this site. It kills me that Tish James killed that. Is it because of, if Broadway housing got it, it, does that mean that there could not be the church there? Or is it no. because of ULERP and the time with ULERP? Uh, no, no. The, the attorney general's office intervened because they claimed that Broadway housing didn't have any experience building sanctuary spaces, which is, you know, true. Um, and that, and then they also intervened because they had this ongoing investigation into the church. Um, and because it had already taken so long. So broad, the holdup with Broadway housing was not going to be a rezoning, which we offered if they needed it. And they said, no, thank you. We'll do it without it. Um, it was going to be with the, with the HPD financing. But Broadway Housing was like, yeah, that's normal. We'll, we, that timeline works for us. And the attorney general said, well, that timeline doesn't work for us. Does the, um, does the current um, shelter, do the people who build the shelters, do they have um, experience building sanctuaries? They do, ironically. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Part of what they got caught up in is that they bought a lot of churches for redevelopment. Mm. Thank you. I mean, who was who the council member that came and, and praised their work and his Robert Carnegie? Carnegie, Carnegie. Um, may, who many may know from St. John's basketball, I want to say he's like seven feet tall. Um, former council member from Brooklyn, former chair of the Housing and Buildings Committee in the city council. Um, he is their lobbyist, I would say, um, and came and, and spoke about the high quality of work they did in with shelters in his district. Um, and honestly, I believe that because um, we asked them if they would do BRC and they said, no, we only own we only deal with high quality shelter operators. Yeah. You know, I got to say, it's also very concerning uh, because my, this corner right here is turned, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's turned into the place where they shipped all of the mentally ill substance abusers. And there, these are all new people and like finding people OD'd under, somebody had a, um, I think I told this story, they had a motorcycle with the cover over it. I saw feet under there and I thought, oh, well, somebody's under there getting high. After I passed them a few times during the day and the feet didn't move, 
it turned out to be somebody who had OD'd under there. Like it is, when I say my block is hot, I cannot even explain to you how hot it is. Now, God bless anybody who gets permanent housing who's been homeless. However, they are, you know, that demographic, it might, if they just got off the street, some of their friends might be these new people over here and it 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 mixed up together and then dogs because that's the other thing um the animal situation i totally understand that um in terms of the emotional part however um this is already like no all these people over here with dogs who don't pick up after them, it's ridiculous. And we have a whole, you know, empty building, till building that's been till for 10 or 12 years and sitting empty. They don't take their dogs over there to poop where there nobody lives. They bring them, you know, on this side of the street for some reason. I, oh God. <laughs> I'm, so the tears. <laughs> the, here is what I can say. Um, there will be a 35 person staff at this shelter, which yeah. seems high to me. Yeah. Um, but as well as the, food. the which which is a good thing. This will also be the church um, who will also have, I think, like a fellowship hall for running um, community engagement services out of. So this will be eyes on the street and a building that will be heavily staffed, more heavily staffed than the supportive housing building. Interesting. Um, Miss Dunn, are you trying to speak or are you just off mute? Still, yeah. All right, yeah, hold on. Um, so, and the only, and it is probably a very little comfort coming from me, um, but I think that you'll, exp I think that, I would like to connect you with the developers because you are the immediate next door neighbor. I, I believe I did share with you, Daria, um, Saba's information, and they said they are happy to take calls from neighbors and um, work with them. They are, it's, it, it's, they are some of the most accessible um, and accommodating developers that have come before this board um, in a way that's very unusual. Um, you know, they, they, they were giving us what we wanted. And then when that got smashed, they were trying to help us find other ways to get what we wanted um, in terms of- It came um, in earnest in my opinion, yeah. And, and they've been on this road with us for, six and a half years, seven years. Um, and we have reached the end of the road, according to Tish James. Wow. I mean, we don't, we, we kind of have the same gun to our heads that they have to theirs from the attorney general. Because the mandate is that something get built by the end of 2024. That's a fast pace. Um, and between, you know, the Community Benefits Fund should go to ameliorate some of the strain on that. So I don't know whether that means those little like doggy bag things that can be posted for people to get bags when they walk their dogs and make sure that there is trash receptacles for it. I don't know if that means, you know, funds for assisting people in the shelter so that you know they're connected to services but we as a board will vote on that and what to fund um so this is not a good situation it feels like it feels like we were given i don't know whatever they call it the golden ring of the carousel or we were given you know we were handed the treasure, the thing that we wanted most, and then had it snatched away from us. But 
the consolation such as it is, is that this is a much better project than the one that they came to us with six years ago. And sometimes that is the best we can do as a board. But there's been a lot of crying. Um, Walter, you have your hand up. So we're voting today to pass this, this letter of support onto the general board so we can vote in on it there. Yes. Right? Correct. So, yes. so Correct. of course, hopefully we can turn it down. Of course. Of course, of course. Well, we 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 cross that bridge when we get to it. I mean, what was the vote in the housing committee, Signy? Uh, it was. Uh, let's see how many were there. Six for, one against. I think it was might have been seven four because we have public members. Oh, that's right. So uh, I have the notes here. Hold on, I can tell you. But I'll this is unanimous been... consent, so we can let the board um decide. All right, but. I'll second. Moved for unanimous consent by member Alexander, seconded by um, Ted. I would like to abstain. All right. Darius abstention is noted. Um, anyone opposed to adding this to the agenda for Thursday? Going once, going twice. All right. The next item is a uh, reso regarding affordable housing and institutions. Okay, let me switch over here. Okay, so this one, um, this is actually a, a bit of a piggyback off of what you saw Heather propose uh, because there was a bit in there about the concern for affordable housing in new projects. So uh, why is Columbia not considering affordable housing for the community in their new projects? And we agree. And uh, we put this reso together um, in an urgency, uh, urging Columbia to provide affordable housing in new projects. Um, so that is basically what this reso is. It's pretty, uh, straightforward in that. Um, we go through a couple of uh, whereases that show that, you know, our, our local council member, our borough president, our mayor are all saying we need affordable housing for our residents. Um, there's a quote here from Abreu specifically about Columbia needing to uh, jump on that bandwagon, not just housing for their students and their faculty and staff, but um, keeping affordable housing for our uh, our residents as well, especially considering our history, the Manhattanville expansion, all of this, uh, the displacement of our residents, all of these things. Um, this was brought to us uh, uh, by MHCC Just Housing. Um, they helped us with this, and we uh, we added a few things, um, and so. Uh, goes on to, you know, talk a little bit about the rent burden in our neighborhood. Um, and then specifically about the Maranime. Is that how you say it? How you say it? Is it Maranime? Yeah, I think so. Uh, specifically about Maranime, it mentions that. And then, um, but in a more general sense, new projects. Um, so setting aside 30% of apartments for residents of CB9. Um, so that is, that is basically we're addressing that affordable housing portion that was con a concern when, uh, discussing the Moran May, and it seems like a bigger concern with any new projects. So that, that's what I would say about this. Um, anything to yeah, add? This is our third resolution on this. <laughs> Good point. Any questions for Signy? In hopes of what? Sorry? Uh, it, this is in hopes of what? To pass it? Of Yeah, well, of adding it to the board. We're adding it to the agenda. Agenda for general board, but yes, to get Columbia to include some housing for non-affiliates in their buildings that is affordable. Unanimous consent. Member Hardiman's request unanimous consent. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Carolyn Thompson. All those, anyone opposed to adding this to the agenda for next Thursday, speak now. 
going once, going twice. It's been added to the agenda for next Thursday. The final action item before the liquor licenses is our letter of support to Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development in, in support of uh, City College's application to be a research center of excellence um, for HUD, I guess. Yeah, it's it, so this is a uh, um, it covers a couple quite a few topics, but it's an application that they are putting in for this grant uh, as a research center of excellence. We would be one of their partners in, in support of this. They would work on you know data on on many areas, but in particular um, you know uh, uh, those those areas that are less served than others when it comes to equality and equity. And they'll be doing a lot of research from that uh, impacting housing, community, economic development. All a, a lot of areas are included, but in particular housing, and it's an H a HUD grant. So they came to us. Are there any and questions? We've worked, for we've worked with CCNY quite a bit. Um, we've gotten quite close with Sean Rickenbacker and um uh, and it was passed through committee um unanimous unanimously i believe so yeah unanimous and, consent and, okay yeah, walter called for unanimous consent ted seconded does anyone oppose this resolution being added to the your letter of support being added to the thursday general board meeting agenda speak now going once going twice I will just add that that relationship with the Bond Center um, really began under my predecessor, um, Chair Padmore John and April Tyler. Developed by April. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. yeah. All right. Um, that is the last action item before the liquor licenses. Um, so I will turn it. I'm going to pull up my agenda um, and I'm going to turn it over to Pat and Carolyn for an overview of the liquor license. Gary, may I also request that all the missing uh, agenda items, the action items be sent to me ASAP? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with three new applications, it looks like, Pat or Carolyn. Talking about the price three? Yes. Uh, new grain. Little Street Lounge in Crystal Fresh Market. You hear they were all approved. Are they full liquor licenses? Yes. Okay. Little Street. So for for the New Grange one, what, did they ever meet with the tenants of the building? I think that they're meeting now. Oh. Oh, is that what Edwin is? But well, it's concerns. I know that uh, they do not have uh, something satisfactory in line, even though, uh, according to Edwin, even though um, they say that the Grange is new, they say it's really the same ownership with another person as uh, you know the the lead person, but That's otherwise right. the same company, right. and mm -hmm. so they feel that the um, they're not going to make much progress unless they really have a meeting and set some things in place with the landlord and the restaurant. Well, it's not the same people who do it. They're not the same people because they came to the to the meeting and it's not the same people. He said that they were, even though they're different names. Uh, maybe they put three three new names there, but it's uh, the no, same. No, not three new names. It's not. Two attorneys that came to the meeting. Had nothing to do with the old grange. The old grange is not even open. And there's been no liquor license for that. Well, we have to make sure, Carolyn, they disguise themselves under other people. And That's oh, I'm, no, I'm exactly. Aware that. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm aware of that. You know, but according to what came to the meeting, these are not the same people. It's not a, it's not a name change because sometimes they do. It's just new people opening up the store, but I will check again. Yeah. Can we hold? Can we hold that? Can we hold this over, Barry? Um, Barry. Well, no. What we? I okay. mean, I think the intelligent thing to do here would be to add it to the agenda, and if we don't have a satisfactory 
place where we are by Thursday, then the committee withdraws it from the agenda. Okay, yeah, that. I'll call tomorrow. Yeah, I'll call tomorrow. Okay. Um, unanimous Street. consent. All right, Ted's request unanimous consent on these <laughs> three. So I have to abstain money. from this, Barry, not voting unanimous consent on the new Grange. Understood. Uh, I abstain also. Abstentions from the first vice chair and from member Henry. Anyone opposed to adding it to the agenda? Going once, going twice. I will ask Pat and Carolyn if there is not a satisfactory conclusion reached on this that we pull it from Thursday's agenda. I'll um, let you know after I talk to them tomorrow. Okay. Um, also, Little Street Lounge, is that the same operator doing the cloakroom or it's a new uh, new person? Oh, um, not the cloakroom. No. Okay. It's a shame. I like the cloakroom. Um, the cloakroom hasn't come up for renewal yet. Got it. Well, it's the same address, so presumably it's the same. Yeah. They presumably they're closed. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Hilar Restaurant Group Corp, which is Caridad on 145th on the downtown side. Mm -hmm. What is the change here? Let me see. Which one? Which one? Um, J Lar. Yeah, J Lar at 3533 Broadway between 144th and 145th on the downtown side. It's it's the carry. It's corporate. So they're selling the business. No, just a corporate chain. New first thing is being added. I think it's corporate chain. Let me check. It is a corporate change. What is changing? Let me let me see if I can get the application up. Um. While we're waiting for her to pull up the application, this is a different topic, but I don't want the meeting to adjourn without bringing it up. Hikeel Elliston worked diligently on uh, updating or critiquing the SLA regulations for CB9. And I don't know, if are we gonna vote on that as a board and have it in place for the applicants when they apply for liquor licenses? What's the application again? Uh, that? It's the SLA requirements for CB9. It was sent around. Uh, yeah, I know. I remember. Okay. I, I, I think we can just do that at the committee level. Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, That's I what I thought would have happened. I thought that would have come to our committee for right. consideration and for discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah let's refer that, that to Uniform to Services. Exactly. So I think it. you think that's based on the thing from CB4? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was presented to the committee and he made the corrections and the suggestions. No, and I don't think it was. I think it was oh, submitted it was. to some people, but it was not submitted to Uniform Services and Transportation. No, it wasn't. Exactly. It was not. No. And when I say committee, I mean the chairs, the co chairs. No. So nothing happened. So I'm just asking to let's act on it. So um, saying on the committee level, fine. So at the next meeting, it should be an agenda item. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll put it. We'll refer it to Uniform Services. Okay. Yes, we did. Like, like I said, you're not even going to push that. But can I also um answer um Barry? Can I answer your question about what the change is on the application? It indicates that currently Laura Espinal and Armory Espinal are the owners, and it says Laura is leaving the company, making Amory M A A M O U R Y the sole principal. So there were two owners before; one is leaving, and now the other is going to be the um sole principal. That's why there's a corporate change. Right. Exactly. Appreciate. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, the by the way, the uh, the the email was sent on April 10th to to Carolyn to to you, Carolyn and Pat. Yes. Yes, we got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Good. All right. Anyone want to move on Hilar, Jilar, whatever? Jilar. Right. They were food. Okay. Yeah, but the concrete was a food. Was a well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we just add JLR to the agenda for next week? Okay. 
Anyone want to move that? So moved. So moved. All right, it's been moved. Uh, sorry. <laughs> we want to vote on it? No. No. What a unanimous consent. Member yeah. Harmon has requested unanimous consent. Second. Is there a second by Walter one, Alexander. Is this for the corporate change? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. the um the corporate change is that there were two owners of the oh, uh, yeah, company and mm -hmm. one left, and now the per the remaining owner is the sole owner. So that's the corporate change. All right. So if anyone opposes adding this to the Thursday oh, general board meeting agenda, speak now. Going once, going twice. All right, it's on the agenda for next week. Um, all right, now we can do picante, bono, etc. Carolyn. Thank you. All right. Are there any issues with these? Uh, we've heard about Picante last month. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. To clear it up, to my understanding. The I understand from our meeting today, it does not seem like it's cleared up, although it's both Picante and the billiards. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that. Right, it's not the billiards. The Picante has cleared up the violation. I, I don't. Application. Uh, I, I have been in Picante several nights to check it out. And while there is music, it's not noticeably loud. I mean, it's loud. It's, it's, it's quiet enough to eat dinner and have a conversation. Right. What um, I... Oh, Barry, what um, the tenants were saying is that it's the af what's going on after 11. Mm -hmm. There's some special club or it becomes something else. And that's where the disturbance is, uh, primarily with the billiards group, although their liquor license is not mm -hmm. up for renewal. But it also happens with Picante also. That's what that group was telling us mm -hmm. uh, at General well, Board. That sounds like that we need a fact. Today, and I didn't hear anyone speak about Picante. So no, they did. They did speak about Picante at the April General Board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, we, we can do some field trips and some some fact finding missions, um, like was done with billiards. Um, well, just to remind everybody, uh, well, to remind everyone that when we did the research um, as of April 27th, according to the State Liquor Authority, the license, the renewal license has already been issued. So, it's been paid. It's been yeah. And they've already been approved. Yeah. After that, they find that they have been paid. Mm -hmm. No other violations on them. So, when I was at the same meeting that the Freedom was at today, no one said anything about Pecan. They mentioned. They you know, Carolyn, they mentioned Picante, but they stressed the billiards. Yeah, because okay. the billiards place is, a, is an effing menace. Right. Um, so is it the billiards yeah. that place that's the problem and not Picante? Both are, but percent. Picante is Both of them. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Picante, not as much. And what they, like I said, what they were saying about Picante is uh, it's the after hours, the 11 to 4 a.m. Hmm. It's not open at four. A. Anyway, I will have four exactly. So I, I will, I will, I will scope it out. I live mm -hmm. across the street. Um, but I'm pretty sure that what they're talking about is in fact sound that's being transmitted from the billiards place. Anyway, are there any qu other questions about any of the other renewals? Uh, I I just have to uh, be present, not entitled for Manhattanville. Okay. Um. Okay. You, they are they are a customer. Yes, they serve my coffee. At last, I know. Okay. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Just remember the three D's of conflict of interest: disclose, debate, don't vote. Got it. We haven't had a coib training in a while. <laughs> yeah, usually it's with uh, the Manhattan Borough President's office. Yeah, Yutha, we should invite coib to the September meeting. I had more I missed them. Conflict of interest board. Oh, okay. We do it every two years. Yeah. All right. So are we adding this to the agenda next week, folks? 
The ones that I need called off? The renewals. Right. Uh, absent picante because it's already been renewed. Right. They've all already, yep. All of them have been renewed. Oh, well, if that's if that's what you're going to base it on, Tartina has already been renewed. Exactly. And, and, um, and uh, Pesto Fresh Mexican Grill has already been renewed. So I suggest unanimous consent. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Member Hardiman has requested unanimous consent. Is there and a second? second? Great. Great. Seconded by Walter Alexander. If anyone opposes adding these to the agenda for next Thursday, please speak now. Going once, going twice. All right. Thanks, old everyone. Thanks. And we got old business. And we've got new business. All right, motion to adjourn, be in order. Unanimous moved. consent. Moved. All those in Second. favor. Moved by Walter, seconded by Daria. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye, aye, aye. 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 Barry, can we talk? At, at, can I call you? Right. Yes. Right, yes. I hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Daria, can um, can I can I reach out to you about this 1763 thing? Yes. All right. And Barry, okay. I need to speak with you. I am I am I sure mean, you do. I do too. I need about two minutes of your time, Barry. Well, I do too, Barry. No. <laughs> well, I need to say good night. I need to say good night. I need to second that call. Can we get unanimous consent on good night? Yes.